Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the uh, Rodeo Time podcast, like 55 or something. We've done 55 of these. It's crazy. That's a bunch. Did you That's hear that? That's a bunch. We it's got crazy. Mr. Uh, um, Corey Anderson with Total Feeds. You got your cap on backwards like a like a G. It's hard to do the headphones. You look this like is X- how I do it when I when I work a camp. You look like Axl Rose right now. <laughs> like, Welcome I, to the jungle. I was thinking like, <laughs> I was thinking with his long hair. Like you're like uh like they got the camera on you in the um um uh at a, at an MLB what's that thing all the players sit in the dugout yeah. you're in the dugout you got your cap on backwards you're spitting sunflower seeds and you got your long hair there and they're like the the announcers are talking about you and then you got Corey Anderson he's your clean up pitcher you know <laughs> I look, yeah I look more like an old uh, surfer don't I yeah. Yeah, that too. Oh, right. Man, are these cameras on live? <laughs> like, this would be awesome, man. I don't. I personally didn't get that, but I don't know a lot of surfers though. Um, this is a long intro, even. Yeah. This is the longest podcast we've ever done. Um, we go over all kinds of things: rodeo, ranching. I tell the story of how Katie Kaufman and I started dating. Brutal. Talk about a couple ex-girlfriends. Brutal. Um, three of them. I bring up three ex-girlfriends. We talk about how to get an internship again because I keep getting asked it. We talk about how to get a sponsorship Mm -hmm. with how to get uh, sponsorship total feeds. How to make money in in rodeo. Donnie got a sponsorship in this podcast. So um, (laughs) Dale gets a little heated at some people that are ignorant to how much work it's going to be to be a cowboy. Um, but don't let that scare you from reaching out and asking me questions. I do love when people ask me questions. It's downright mean. I'm not downright mean. mean. I'm, I'm like just a snake. I'm, I'm simply, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mean. Text me, ask me anything you want. We'll probably answer it even here on the podcast. I'll probably answer it. Donnie's the one that spit the most wisdom today. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Get, Buckle up. Go ahead. All right. Hit pause. Go use the bathroom <laughs> and come back and listen because we did this podcast Get so us. long, all three cameras died, and I'm having to record the intro on my iPhone. Get a look, cup of coffee. Look at these cameras. <laughs> They're dead. <laughs> SD cards ran out of space. Um, anyways, we need to have backup uh, batteries, by the way, next time. Thank you, Total Feeds, so for this bringing is us. My fault. Yes, yes. <laughs> Donnie Ray Daytona's fault. Um, thank you, Total Feeds, for bringing us this. Is that the is that the company that? Yeah. Oh, yep. There it is. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah, that uh, brought this podcast fifty five. Love you and uh, roll the intro. Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Viking here. With Donnie Ray Daytona, and then also myself, Dale Brisby, great sport rider ever to walk the earth. You're welcome. Um, you're not wearing your Viking helmet. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't fit over the... the no, I'd uh, have to do it this way, so I can do it around the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Vikings aren't supposed to put horns on there, right? No, they didn't, really, they didn't really have horns on there. Okay, horns. that was like a, a, a Hollywood thing that was added later? It was from the opera. Opera they yeah. put horns on their heads. Oh, opera. You okay. uneducated swine. Hey, well, <laughs> <laughs> I knew they weren't originally on there. Yeah. <laughs> Just a common hillbilly. Yeah. That's what I am. Yeah. Uneducated, <laughs> common hillbilly swine. Uh, yeah, the one episode I watched of Norsemen uh-huh. was where I, uh, I picked up on the fact that, anyway, it's kind of a gory comedy. It's a good show. It's a good show. Yeah, it's, it's a little dark at times, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't like how the third season went back. Like it went pre, it was like prequel. I yeah, had, I had to I have to admit I kind of lost interest after the first. Season. Yeah, it's not that like. How often does that happen? Now it never happens on rodeo time. What's that? What People season, lose what, interest. What season are we on? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I think you just <laughs> you just, <laughs> I say that a lot, don't I? Yeah. Um, I think you just edited uh, two thirty. Yeah. How many episodes are in a season? Some shows are like 22. Some shows are like... I mean... Well, let's say 10. So this is 23 seasons. Yeah. 23 well, seasons like, of Rodeo so Time. So congratulations to season 24 coming up. In this is like time. days of our lives. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like a circle. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> We've done a lot of videos. Yeah. 
Yeah. That those are just rodeo times, 230 of them. Yeah, what so I was looking at your count a couple of weeks ago. What's your total count on you, your YouTube channel? I I don't know. I don't know how to That's look anymore. It used to have just have the number right up at the top. It might still somewhere. It's crazy how much I don't know about YouTube. Like everybody sees me as a YouTuber. Yeah. I made videos for like four years before I knew you could monetize it. <laughs> I was just like I was just making videos. Like right. no bull crap. Anyways. Can you go back and monetize them? No. Oh. No. So YouTube, you yeah. owe me. No, no, not like that, but like future views. If you didn't use if you didn't use copyrighted yeah, music. I got you. Which I did. <laughs> My most famous video got taken down. Apparently Jay Z wasn't fond of me roping swine <laughs> and using on to the next one at the very end as the outro. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I thought you guys were tight. Yeah. Well we were. Yeah, didn't you used to date Beyonce? Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, Beyonce, I think you're cute too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need to remake. Yeah. We need to do our version of that. What's that called? Uh, his name is Froggy Fresh. It Froggy was, Fresh. It was Krispy Kreme, but Krispy Kreme sued him and he changed his name to Froggy Fresh. <laughs> Froggy Fresh. <laughs> Krispy Kreme. Um, what's that song called? I J am the baddest of them all. JB plays yeah. it all the time. Yeah. If you ain't about money, then, then I don't mess I don't with, mess with y'all. <laughs> you I don't, don't get girls because I ain't very, very tall. tall. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's probably the hardest part of hip hop is coming up with an original name that's not copyrighted, like Krispy Kreme. I, I saw one deal on TikTok. It's like your your hip hop name is Lil, and then the second is is um, whatever your last reason for going to the hospital was. Little finger. <laughs> my, my rapper name would be Little Finger. Mine's a little hemorrhoid. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go there, but I know the last time you went to the hospital. I'm trying not to say that. All right, we got a little colonoscopy in the house. <laughs> Better than little prostate. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Oh shoot. Yeah. Um. We, we one of y'all said something a while ago. It sparked a story I was gonna tell about something. Well, there is. Oh, I dated Beyonce. Anyways, yeah. my my love life. Um, oh, but great. We'll get to the questions. Yeah, um, thanks for bringing that up, Donnie. So yeah, gotta listen to him. Dang, I forgot to call Garrison back yesterday after we moved that container. He said that container must be really full, huh? <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm moving a container. Let me call you right back. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll call you after this podcast, guys. He's, he's a funny dude, man. Uh, what's your favorite rodeo memory? Me and Billy E going ninety at the uh, same rodeo. Those were always fun. Billy at bar. Yeah, I'm gonna do some rapid fire. But a uh, favorite bullfighting memory. I don't usually fight bulls, but when I do, I'm terrified and I usually pee a little. Is what I said. And then I put a picture of me saving you, Donnie. Yeah, I seen that. What prompted your YouTube debut? Um, I started with Facebook in 2010, and then in 2013, Mitch uploaded my first video that had me and Weston Rakowski in it, July 2013, and then Instagram in 2014, like I said, made videos before I ever even knew, um, but yeah, that was, that'll be eight years this summer. Do you think, first YouTube video. do you think Dang. you would have ever figured out how to do upload stuff without Mitch Montgomery to do it for you first? <clears throat> yeah. Because I was already doing some stuff on Facebook. Like I was, I was like, oh, okay. okay. I was, I had been doing stuff on Facebook for three years. I had a Facebook since I was in, since 2010. Um, but the, the significance of what Mitch did was the fact that it was like such a, it started with a bang. Yeah. You know, and it was like the first video and everybody was like, who is this goober? <laughs> and, uh, and it was very well edited. It was high quality. I don't you know. know. I, it's footage. the one in the hotel room at Cowtown or wherever. Yeah, well, yeah, a little bunkhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he just he just did a great job. Took it upon himself. Yeah. So, no, I definitely owe a lot to Mitch Montgomery on that front. Yeah, I'd already been doing it to a degree, but like that just kind of really put me on small the, potatoes. Yeah, that yeah. put me. It it took me to the next step for sure. And he did like several videos. The first several videos I'd ever done. I say several. It was about five. He did about five, four or five. But anyway. Was he was he coaching you? Did you know what 
Like, or was he just following you with the camera? We just did little skits. That you made up. Right. Yeah, we yeah. both kind of played a role. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have to know the Katie Kaufman story. <sighs> Gosh dang it. We got to talk about that. Well, I just need to tell the origin story. So she was Miss Rodeo, California. A lot of people don't know that about her. You know, it's like, wow, people voted for this woman to do, <laughs> like be in charge of something. Or however it works when you become a queen. I do know about being a queen, though, that it's like a one-year deal. So I'm going to these rodeos. It's like four years since she's been a queen, and she's still showing up wearing everything like she's still a queen. Behind the bucket shoots. I'm trying to get on my bull. All of a sudden, she's showing it up at all these rodeos, and not even in California, just wearing Miss Rodeo California stuff at different rodeos, you know, and um, follow me around forever and ever. Finally, I catch her one day. Um, I'm in my camper, and I catch her. My camper, um, I, my rigging bag was on, on the back of the camper outside, and um, I catch her trying to pull – um, some bull hair off of my spurs because I'd spurred this bull so much that this bull hair was on there. Has that ever happened to you, Donnie? Yeah. Anyways, and I was just like, fine, whatever, let's date. She was selling it on eBay, you know. So I was like, fine, whatever, let's date. First date, she wore her Miss Radio California. The That's, sash? Yeah, the sash. Should have been a red flag. I think I, saw, been a, I think I saw her in Walmart with that. Oh, yeah. No, she'll still wear it. Yeah. <laughs> They took the crown away from her. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like, you can you can have the sash, you know, because it reeks of body odor anyway. It's not been washed in yeah. half a decade. Right. But we're taking the crown, you know. So, anyways. <laughs> How? <laughs> she's, li- <laughs> she's living in the glory days. Yeah. yeah. How long can you ride that? Because I, uh, I'm I'm good friends with a former. Miss Rodeo America, and she gave me a number of years. And like you have, there's this window after you're done that you can ride. You got to take yeah. advantage of it. And she sounds like I think like what Katie happened is the like window. the window closed. And <laughs> what she did her. is, you know, she's so crazy. She just knocked a hole in the wall, she made started, herself a new window, started licking the glass. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when God God closes a window, I break a hole in the wall. Yeah. Right there, you go. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's Katie. That's my ex right there. Yeah, I was trying to close the window of opportunity dating me, you know, and anyway. Great girl, though. Great girl, though. Great girl, though. Yeah. So that's the story of Katie Kaufman and I. Um, You're welcome for that. Uh, San Antonio Rodeo, not for me, not this year, but I wish. Cowboys you look up to, myself, because I'm a super puncher, and I posted a really cool picture of me cowboying through a creek, riding Buckethead. Yeah, why even ask you that question? Right. We know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well put that one on a T for him. Yeah. <laughs> my own hero. Ask me something hard. Yeah. Oh, believe me, there's a bunch of these where I, my answer is, you tell me. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what cowboy do you look up to, Donnie, besides me? It's me and then who? Who, who uh, have you found yourself looking up to lately? Ah, uh, shoot. As far as, like, rodeo cowboys probably... Like Jacobs, guys like Rusty Wright, probably trying to. You're a big Rusty Wright fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard not to be a uh, look up to JB. Yeah, it's just different game, you know. We're yeah. play- me and him are playing different games. Right. Yeah. Who would you look up to if you were rodeoing right now, Corey? In the rodeo industry, who are you a fan of? Where it's just like, man, that's that's, that's some people need to model after this person. With the relationships, you know, that I have with people. Now that's impossible, and it's impossible for me not to bring up JB. I mean, the guy's made of iron. I can't believe yeah. how he can hang in there. Yeah, fifteen PBR World Finals. Uh, we and we all know him. It's like you yeah. can't stop him. Right. I, I've never heard him say "ow" <laughs> about anything. Yeah. Like he's like never. I've seen him take banamine and stuff for for pain, but he's never right. been like complained about being in pain. No, nope. yeah. like. He, compl- he complains about other things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly <not> people. <laughs> it's, it's it's very similar to the, the Tom Brady story, you know, just about the just on and on and consistency going on and on. 
10 years to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that, that super healthy diet and lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> What's your stance on faking it till you make it? And I said, I've been the greatest since I started, so I wouldn't know anything about faking it. I, I'm just not a fan of faking anything, people. Okay. <laughs> What's your stance on faking it's, it until you make it? Yeah, it's all real. It's all real, folks. I got to tell you, hanging out with Dale, there's, this is the real Dale. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm a fan of <laughs> I'm a fan of people like people. I was telling Donnie about this the other day, but like the very end of Eight Mile. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Eight Mile yeah. with Eminem? Yeah. And at the very end, whenever he's rapping, and the whole deal is about this and the other guy, but then at the very end, he this is himself mm -hmm. and everybody's like cheers for you know he ends up winning whatever the deal you know you get you've seen the movie but like that to me is super intriguing you know well that like you put your truth out there and what are what are they going to say to you then yeah i you know fake it till you make it it's I a think, fine line yeah i think people take that the wrong way sometimes it's like you can't be inauthentic yeah you can't be someone you're not no right no you can't but you can be self-deprecating. You're like, you know what? I'm. I don't have it yet, but I'm. I'm working on it. Look yeah, at what you, I got. Right. People. People will. Will take that kind of honesty. Yeah. It's your self-confidence. Can you hand me that cap? I'm starting to get hot. I need to take off this beanie. <laughs> don't show me your wig. Y'all don't look at my wig. <laughs> We're gonna blur this out. The next question is: Is Donnie a super puncher? Yeah, I seen that. I didn't expect that response from you. Dude, you're under the you're under the um, instruction of a super puncher. You've been mm -hmm. here a year and a half. If I can't make you a super puncher after a year and a half, then you got no hope. Yeah, but the finger, like, does has that... it only been a year and a half? Yeah, feels like you've been around a while. Is that like, a, like in a bad way? <laughs> I'm paying you a compliment. Oh, thank I'm you. comfortable with. I don't know what I'd do if I showed up and Donnie wasn't here. That's the kind of stuff that makes Donnie uncomfortable, though. <laughs> what? giving you a compliment yeah i guess yeah and he doesn't that. like giving them out either that ah, also makes him uncomfortable i'll give them out when they're due <laughs> they gotta be really freaking due yeah i'm not talking about me it's easy to give me compliments yeah i, I could probably count the compliments came out of his mouth in a year and a half right on one hand trump or biden old son i said dale brisby if you didn't vote for me you ain't no cowboy i, sh I should that's my favorite t-shirt the, the brisby gibbons <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love that shirt. Now you have a couple extras laying around. Oh, so uh, they're going to be given away during our spring cleaning sale. Mine got blood on it. <laughs> I got shot with a taser while I was. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was so funny, man. That was hilarious. Was it everything you thought it would be and more? <sighs> Donnie wanted to get shot by that taser. By the way. Uh yeah. <laughs> Most of what you see when when you see like me. Um, mistreating some might call it my interns they're asking for it well that's yeah for yeah. instance us tasing him you were like you were like because i was like i was like yelling at you guys afterwards you're like i don't know why you're mad at us like you told us to do it and i was like dude i just <laughs> <laughs> i was nervous that you were because <laughs> i felt bad <laughs> I don't think say, anybody felt more say, bad. Donnie, I don't want you to take this the wrong way before I tase you. <laughs> Dude, Leroy, the first time, we, it, it, he missed the first time. He pulled, t he pulled, he drew and shot over my head. Like, Oh, my gosh, these little barbs, like, <laughs> in you his can see slow-mo yeah. like, over the top of Donnie's head. And you talk about in anticipation, like, you're sitting there, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't imagine. <laughs> Like, you're like this close to just backing out, but yeah. you can't because it was Cause my now idea. you had to think about it. Yeah, I was like, just freaking do it, and he and he pulled, and he's like, Psh, and I was like, oh gosh, dang it, now I gotta do it again. <laughs> we only have one more charge. Yeah, <laughs> and then he felt so bad. I like, I don't blame him because like I would probably have done the same thing, but I wanted him to hold the button at the time. I probably didn't want him to hold the button, but. I wish I w he would. You have wanted held. to. You wanted him to have held yes, the button. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to feel it. Like I wanted to, but the shot itself, like 
it it dropped you. Like it dropped me, anyways. I don't so know. So it got gunpowder That's kind of the point. It. Yeah. That gunpowder just explodes. And this one's cheap. So they're just like these jagged <laughs> fish hooks. Dude, they were like barbed. straight fish hooked barbs, like <laughs> flying through the air. It's like if a kid made a bullet, is what this looked like. It's just <laughs> like right into his. One was like, it couldn't have gone more in the center of his spine. <laughs> Oh, it's in your back? Oh, yeah. Well, where else were we going to do it? I don't know. I thought he'd face his accuser. I, I would have, but if he almost shot me in the back of the head, I would have hated to get shot in the face. <laughs> in the face. Donnie, you're missing the point. It would be great video. <laughs> you got It's taking it, one for it the was, team. Literally. It was great video. It Anyways. did end up being really good video. Yes, <laughs> that is 100% correct. Uh, how do you get in the gospel? Well, the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So you just crack that old good book. And, and so Thomas, if you're a heavy praying. reader. Yeah. Have Ever? you have you read all of them, cover to cover? Have you read the Bible? Front no, back? I've not read every book. I've read the gospel. Thomas? The book? Of- well, there were over 20 gospels originally. you got to know your Bible history. The Do I need to teach you something? I'm today? talking about... I'm talking about the Gospels as According opposed to Dale. As a, <laughs> According to Dale. <laughs> Favorite horse, that's one. Boone. Yeah. How old were you when you rode your first bull? Nine years old. Best you weren't younger than that? No. Oh. That's when I first discovered it. How old were you? How old was I? Yeah. When I got on my first bull? Yeah. 24. Okay. A little different. Way different. <laughs> I don't, I, More established. I mean, some of us mature oh, just a little said, slower. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's agreeing with you. Right. <laughs> Me too. You, did you mean to agree with him? No, on that? he's just an <laughs> idiot. Best way to train a horse for a beginner horseman. And I do a swipe up to a video. We do many just ranching videos. One of them is uh, how to train a horse. This next one is roping advice for beginners. Garrison Gable, who we mentioned earlier, because he texted me. Picture of you roping in the pasture. Favorite memory with JB. We talk about it a lot, but it was that day we were all there whenever he hot shotted Wes and he rode. And Great, rode day. That boy. Great day. Yeah. Oh, my God, that was so fun. The my, my favorite part was watching him spur New Mexico in a flank rope and tennis shoes. Um, I don't know. It rivals. I don't know which one was cooler. Yeah. He made it look so easy. It was like, like I, I don't know if we all appreciated what we were watching like when we saw it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he just made it look that easy that like. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, that was the day he took the Banamine. Yeah. That was the day he was in pain because of his shoulder. Yep. He's he also had, like, three shots of fireball at lunch that day, <laughs> like, right before that. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, yeah, and the, the whole deal was is that he had no plan of getting on another bull. Yeah. And that was part of it. Like, we knew the details of the day. He had mm-hmm. already been on a, two practice bulls when he was fresh, but that bull was just, like, sp- spontaneous, and he was hungry for – he was just hungry for – bull flesh mm-hmm. you know it was just that was like the passion he had for the sport came yes. out yeah anyway that's it's what, the real deal yeah yeah and that's what was we it took us like you said it took us a while to appreciate it and then of course him doing this to wes <laughs> me roping wes that i was gonna bring that up when you roped West and started dragging him through the grass, and he's being followed by J.P. Moody with a pair of hot shots. <laughs> yeah, Two not one, shots. mind you. <laughs> he started thank, it. Thank God but I was there with I, my camera. I was about to say again, um, there's been multiple occasions where people think are like, Dale, you're mistreating your interns. Wes hot-shotted J.B. out of the blue, no reason. I was there. Why did you? Why would you hot-shot this man? It's like crawling into a cave and poking the hibernating bear. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was standing right there. <laughs> that video has um, resurfaced, not resurfaced because it's never really gone away, but like it's it's my most watched video on YouTube. Yeah. I turned my phone on JB that instant. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. Previously, he's got it coming. <laughs> previously, it was because it was from. Uh, previously, the most watched video was the 
67 year old rancher yeah. dragging around a bag of total feeds you're welcome mm -hmm. <laughs> did you i mean did y'all do you ever take that specific video and tell dr harry hey this is this is this guy my parents don't get you at all <laughs> 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 I mean, they don't even understand like 10 million views on Facebook or 8 million. That one had 8 million views on Facebook. I don't even know if my dad knows how to log into Facebook. I'll be honest with you. Surely 8 million views translates. <laughs> anyway, me. I just have to tell him that. How did you become so dedicated to your Christianity? It's a daily work to stay dedicated to anything. Your relationship with the Lord is no different. Once you get to a place where you realize we don't deserve anything as humans, but God gives us his love, grace, and mercy for free. It will make you want to receive that love every day and receive it as all you have to do for receive it as all you have to do to make it to heaven with him for eternity. Eternity is a long time. Ephesians two, eight through ten. Then, um, who's your favorite intern? <laughs> I like this. <laughs> You can't hear it. Oh, you can't hear it. Because he's he's lost his breath. Did you ever see Nick laugh? No. <laughs> this ain't even bad. Like this, this isn't even bad. This is just something I caught on. Nick laughing. Like it was almost like I I knew another guy like this, and I've told this story on the podcast, so I won't tell it again. But um he, he it was his laugh was like a sneeze. And there was like a level of laughter. Once he got to it, he would like lose control. And it'd be like a sneeze. Like once you lose control and you just like, I see that. you know, like mm -hmm. this joke, that's, that's Nick. Like once he gets tickled to a certain point, he just, it's got to be something scientific about it with certain people. I don't understand it, but. I don't know. <laughs> I only, yeah, I only saw him a couple of times. Once here at the warehouse and once over at your place i, I do know every time someone heard him laugh they asked if that was really his laugh oh it would stop people dead in their tracks Steve, like, steven word was like is that, is that really his laugh like, <laughs> <laughs> is he being serious right now <laughs> um favorite picture of you and jb i don't even have that many pictures this i'll just read what i typed because it's true i don't even have that many pictures of me and him it's not like i ask him for pics every time i see him and then get two extra no I know. there's not even a poster of him on my wall and I don't even watch YouTube videos of his rides every night till I fall asleep. I bet I don't even have a picture of him on my phone. It's the picture I, that we took of you and JB at the finals in the locker room. I said, okay, I found one, and it just so happened to be this lock screen on my phone. <laughs> and I don't even text him every day. JB who? So, <laughs> you know, that's where I'm at on that. You know, they... I used that picture of you guys on our Rodeo Wisdoms of the YouTube. Uh -huh. Yep. And uh, Cowboy Lifestyle Network started putting them up, and they got flagged. Because of the cigarette? So they edited the cigarette out of his his mouth for there when they reposted. Oh. I didn't. God, when the world gets so soft. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to cut your hair? I said, as soon as it's longer than your mom's armpit, fro. That's when I'm like, dang, Fair son, enough. your wig longer than your shaggy leg mane. <laughs> Even your mom's neck hair looks like her papers have Chewbacca on the top side and Cousin <laughs> It on the bottom. Sorry, I got carried away with that one. I, this, That's all good. <laughs> have you ever team roped? Yeah, once. Then I stood up, took my apron off, walked out of that nail salon, and vowed to conquer a real man's event like bull riding. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many kids out there right now that are like teen, like they like to rope and stuff you, and you realize just... i'm a sponsor of the bfi right <laughs> what's that i think i'm gonna run that <laughs> <laughs> worst bull wreck i posted this screenshot and said never been in one. <laughs> oh my god oh. i was so close to jumping in there and helping you out but but then you didn't i didn't i'm like ah oh, he's got it Where'd you ride your first bull, Winnebago, Texas? Uh, what's your favorite thing about Donnie? That he gets uncomfortable when you brag on him. Look at him looking at the wall. <laughs> Look at how uncomfortable he is. Donnie or Leroy? I said, that's easy. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Did you see this video? Are you so excited to wear chinks? I'm very excited to wear chinks. You gotta stop balling them up 
But it's extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> he just carried them like they were dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's some random Snapchats of me ca- caught uh, a uh, gecko this morning in the sink. I got flagged for that. I put a. I put up a. Uh, it was just a joke, but I put up a uh, uh, poll. Should he die or should he live? <laughs> <laughs> Instagram took it down immediately. Dang. <laughs> I. Uh, I think it. They were thinking I was like gonna commit suicide because I was like doing this poll. <laughs> <laughs> die or live? Let me know what y'all want out there. Instagram. <laughs> Feed him a ranch kitty. I watched ranch kitty eat one of those one. When morning. Instagram polls get too serious. <laughs> <laughs> right it's like no 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 no. instagram it's a joke it's, it's just a lizard uh where can i get a yee yee old sun shirt what do you think about those did you see that video no you don't follow your endorsees you didn't I, see the granger smith dale brisby collab i don't have enough time to he's watch he's the song everything. bird of our generation <laughs> okay let me see it this is the shirt that's the design on the shirt okay i like that I'll start wearing one. Yee yee, old son. Go get me one. Donnie? I don't, only have one right we now. We don't have any. <laughs> well, get me the one. <laughs> What's the youngest age you can intern? I said 22. 21, 22 is what we prefer. I'll make an exception here and there, but usually over the, um, over that age is what works out. Ready to be proved wrong, but the main thing is hard work has to come second nature. You can't just come. You can't come here to learn the hard work part. Yeah. No. Can't teach that. Yeah. It's been tough with the younger. They just haven't been anywhere. And that's right at the age where there's a lot of people that, you know, like they think they have been a lot of places. Mm. But Right. <clears throat> they know everything. They right. meant more miles than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need farm kids. What rodeo school would you recommend for a UK boy coming to the US and never rodeo before? <laughs> I posted this video of Tristan Mize getting uh, head-butted in the face <laughs> at the beaches a couple of days ago. I said, you sure you want a rodeo? And then to answer his question, which I put an even worse wreck in this video, I said, thank you, rodeo schools. What hat you wearing? Do you even work out? I said, I just carried your mom on that treadmill for a quarter mile. I think I'm probably good for the year now. You going to the PBR in Del Rio? Not enough added. <laughs> I I like to hear JB tell stories about Del Rio back in the day. Yeah, I thought I like to hear anybody tell stories about Del Rio back. <laughs> yeah, in the well, day. he's the only person that I personally know right, that true. was actually there. Well, tough. Well, you I never to listened. To I, tough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. How many cattle do you need to make a comfortable living? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god well i grew up in the cattle industry uh there's no lots yeah this one guy sent me forty thousand acres given to you for free and the cows and equipment and maybe you can make it <laughs> is what a fellow rancher suggested i said no sh-. i said exactly i don't i don't this is we talk about this almost every podcast but it's not enough because of how often I get asked questions like this, you know, how to get started ranching, how to, you know, yeah. like. when I grew up, the joke was, you know, rancher wins the lottery. They ask him what he's going to do with the money. He said, I'll probably just keep ranching until it's gone. <laughs> 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 yeah, exact. Speaking of which, no, I got my lottery ticket. Bingo. Yeah. Um, yeah. People come in here and multiple <laughs> I feel so bad because I got to deflate their balloon, but they're just like, I mean, to make a long story short, literally what multiple people have told me in conversation is they'd like to rodeo. They'd like to, you know, so they want to learn that. They want to mm-hmm. own a ranch um, and, of course, the land on mm-hmm. that, that the cows are on. Of course. They want to have a house. Of course. And um, a full family, and uh, they want to retire early. <laughs> I am so yeah, trying yeah. not to laugh. Not early, but just like at a so normal So they can take age. care of those cows. Yeah. Yeah, Tom Brady has... And they want to send their kids to college, of course. Yeah. So Tom Brady has seven Super Bowl rings. I'd like seven Super Bowl yeah. rings. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. You come here in your <laughs> 20s with nothing, and you want 
cows to make your living. Yeah. So, all right. So, what are we gonna do? let's let's play this out? Let's play this. Let's out. do the math. I just like I don't think they mean anything. They just don't know. Like it's hundred percent. That's it. A thousand. Oh, like, I, I get it. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm not saying that they're dumb for wanting it. No, it's just the ignorance to like, okay, you can spend twenty five hundred dollars an acre on, and and then let's get all right. We're gonna get a loan. Interest rates are pretty good right now. Yep. So. Let's, That's I mean, not the problem. Three, four percent. You can get a loan. Let's say, you know, twenty five hundred acres. Twenty five hundred dollars, and it's not going to be that much per acre. But whatever, and, it's going to be an expensive place. And what banker wouldn't loan money to somebody with no experience? <laughs> That's a given. Yeah. <laughs> no track record. Right. <laughs> I think people like the idea of it more, like <clears throat> than anything. You know, if you they think it's freedom. Is what I think. Absolutely, they, is what I think they think it is. They equivalent the number of cows with, um, with uh, wealth. Yeah. The more cows you have, the more wealthy you are. If you're gonna run, um, if you're gonna run 150 cows, and you need about almost 4,000 acres, so you're gonna buy a 4,000 acre place. You're gonna you're gonna borrow the money for it. Mm-hmm. Borrow the money for 150 cows. That are gonna die in eight years, <laughs> or not be making calves in eight yeah. years, and hopefully you can clear, you know, one hundred fifty dollars per cow. Mm-hmm. So that's twenty two thousand a year. <laughs> right. I'm talking about after you know, but you, you the, that cow cannot make the land payment. Anyways, you just go down this road. And you're like, oh wait, wait, no, 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 back up. They also want a rodeo. <laughs> yeah, so and I'm they want to be on the road. I'm going to be on the road with a trailer. I don't yeah. have a trailer, but right. I'm going to get one. Yeah, and I'm going to get my gear. And what's diesel free? Yeah, is that free? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, and I don't know how to ride yet, <laughs> right. that or take care of the cow. But right. Anyways, anyways, I'm not trying to be negative. I did a video once. Me and Leroy, we did a video, and it was how to get started ranching, and um. A cow had died, a calf had died, I had a flat tire. It was a bad day. Yep. Bad week, really. And um, I don't say that often. And anyways, in this video, I say, how to get started ranching? Don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so anyways, we scrapped the whole thing, never posted it, and came back and did five ways to get started ranching. And mm-hmm. basically, it was like, it was professions within the industry that you could do to make a Absolutely. living. Absolutely. You know, being a horseshoer, being a horse trainer. Um, you well, could. now you remember, you remember when we were in San Antonio last year, and Webb was telling us that story about when he got hurt and he couldn't. And he was selling cotton candy. Cotton candy. Yeah. And he he was clearing like thousand bucks right. a night. Yeah. He bought he bought the whole thing yeah. for like five hundred dollars, and and then every every event he spent like ten dollars on sugar, yeah, and food coloring, yeah. and he cleared like a thousand bucks, right. And he he made more money than any. You know, almost anybody entered. So he was uh, resourceful in his rodeoing. Yeah. And he went the sales route, and he made his money through sales. And anyways, essentially, Webb is Webb is a hustler. Webb is yeah. Webb is a picture of what's possible. Yep. There's still an element of who you who you know. Mm-hmm. But Webb started from nothing, with nothing, was tenacious, had heart and work ethic, and built up over time. That's how you do it. So it can be done. Well, Webb and- has Webb has it all. He's got cows, commercial cows. He's mm-hmm. got rodeo cows. He's got a house. He's got some land. He makes a, a living um, at rodeo. And he's now to a point where he's got multiple streams of income. He's mm-hmm. also got a couple of rent houses, you know, which are, are leveraged, but they cash flow. And um, and he started small, and he grew, and he grew, and he grew, and now he's got more commercial cows. I haven't asked him because it's freaking rude to ask that, side note. But um, if you back up, he's also, when it comes to, like, the rodeo side, like, the greatest – of all time when it comes to bullfighting. He's in the top two or three, you know? Yeah. And so um, 
he's good at that. You know, he's been working on that craft since he was like 12, 13. Anyway, there's some things in there where you can't just walk into this casually. That that's probably the reason why it's 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 a smidge frustrating. It's like there's the ignorance that comes along with it that it's almost just like it's going to be this easy thing. You know, like when I see the struggles of my parents or, you know, you watch something that Webb went through or what I had to go through yeah. and then somebody comes in and it's just like yeah, I want to do this, this, and this, you know, and yeah. they don't, they don't have a dime to their name. Um, and it's like, are you, I hope you're ready to work. I hope you're ready to suffer. Hope you're ready to, but if you want a rodeo or if you want a ranch, you can get a job. You get a job that, that pays the bills. That's related. Do something that allows you to rodeo that's in the industry. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In and, the industry and, and do that. Dude, build that dream of yours on the side. You know, my dad was a full-time consultant running around to the feedlots. Um, that's what paid the bills when he made Total Equine. It's, yeah. just, it's just all about having a realistic timeline. Right. A realistic timeline. Don't give up on it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I like what y'all said. Like, there's so many people that, like, if you're ignorant to the whole industry, everybody thinks that, owning cows is the only thing yeah that was part of the reason for that five ways oh, to get started yes. ranching because it's like oh my gosh you can if you want to just be like a cowboy that's different that yep. is a completely different yeah now this is a specific question how many cows do you need to make a living um but but like if you just want to be in the industry like i know a lot of guys that make a really good living day working yep training horses trading horses and they don't own a cow. And they, somebody is going to pay you to acquire all the skills that you're going to need when you have your own operation. Right. Now, even That's how you're with, going to look at it. Even yeah, with absolutely. that living, though, there comes a certain level of, you know, you got to be realistic because, like, you, you're not going to be able to scale day work. Right. You know, best you're going to make, some places will pay 175 One time I... I I work. There's one guy I work for. Occasionally, he'll pay two twenty five if it's a full day. An oil field. One time, I caught some cows for them. They paid us five hundred, but it was like a just because they liked us, and it was like a one time deal. Yep. Um, most commonly, one twenty five is what you're going to get paid, mm. and that's to the best hand there is. Yeah. Some you'll be right next to somebody who's like a top hand, and they're going to get one twenty five. Like they got a. They might be riding a ten thousand dollar horse. And they got a forty thousand dollar truck, you know. So that that's where those other things, you know, they're going to train horses and get mm -hmm. eight hundred a month on this horse. They're going to trade horses. They're going to sell that horse for from you know ten. So you got to be smart. Yeah. About those. You're things. constantly got to be doing something that betters yourself in like in that world, all right. the time. Learning like you're always learning. Right. Like it never stops. Yeah. But that's that's the road you take. You're like, yeah. well, I'm gonna whatever I'm doing today, I'm gonna work really hard. I'm gonna keep my eyes open mm -hmm. for the next thing. You can't think, you know, like you can't you can't think you have nothing else to learn or right. No, and that goes back to like that maturity thing about where you're at and what age. And I mean, you the the more you know, the more you learn, you realize the the less you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh man, I'm just, I'm still learning. I think, and I think that's where the the saying like he's forgotten more than this person knows kind of comes from anyways right. you become a student of the game like Webb, he's a student of the game mm -hmm. or like jacobs yeah. that he mentioned you know yep. and you, you can go that route jacobs is a world champion he's been to 10 nfrs in a row he just went to his 10th right. 2011 to, to 2020 is 10 nfrs and uh so he's he does the same thing he's one of the greatest right now going and he's got little. He's got his hand in a little bit of, you know, two or three. I don't want to get into too much of his personal life, but he's got a few streams of income he's working on that he's like slowly built up, and he's got a few cows, but they're they're kind of a, a <coughs> hobby for him. One know? one thing I like you told me one time is like I think you just got to be comfortable with your own story. You know, like 100%. like I myself. I'm probably not gonna go to ten NFRs. Like you know, I'm already 25, whatever. Still, still got a lot of learning to do. And what like you gotta be okay with that, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah, 
Like you, yeah, can't, you can't have FOMO. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. Because like, like Jacobs is, but you got to work just as hard. Like you, like hundred percent. If you want anything at all, you got to work just as hard. Yeah. You got to let that guy be that guy, you know, take from it, learn from it. Don't waste time. But I mean, you, you were in Missouri. Your, your, your dad was a, you know, was a bartender. Like you didn't have, you didn't grow up in Texas where there's a play day in every single town and have these parents that ever since you were nine years old started taking you to yeah. these rodeo events like Jacobs did. Yep. And so him and his brother, they're going to freaking play days. He did every event. He's mm-hmm. done them all. He's gotten on bears, broncs, bulls, team rope, calf rope. Like he can calf rope. He can do those things really good if you anyways, because he grew up around it. So yep. and then he just picks out bronc riding. I was at the first, you know, his first bronc riding school um, when he was like 14, 15 years old, and he never quit after that. Yeah. So he's got that many years on you. He's been doing it for fifteen years. He's been getting on Bronx, and so you've been getting on for one. Yeah. And uh, but anyways, you see these guys that are younger than you. In rodeo and you start comparing yourself and it's your story man right it's your story right and that's that's you can do that in anything in life even with ranching you know like everybody's born different into yep. different situations but anyway i feel bad like i feel i i always feel this like negative it's just such a weird question because it's it's a heavy question when someone asks something like that like how many cows to I feel so because I know there's the Cody Websters are out there like one in a million mm-hmm. or or you know one in 100,000 yeah because odds are you're not going to like what it you're not going to do what it takes to get there because it can happen like one person who's this, I think this guy's in his teens that asked me that question. Yes, it is possible that you go on, like 100%. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying most of the people that ask me do not have a realistic expectation of, which is fine. They you can just, still ask the question. You got to know what that road looks like. Yeah, you, and uh, it's a hard freaking road. Yeah. And once you, and then you start going down it, and you realize that, like, even, like, in a Cody Webster situation, like, there's people – that work there's other professions where you can work that hard for that long and you're a multimillionaire. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Like there's other things in the world where you're like, man, like I lit like if you're thinking the end goal and you're thinking best scenario, like you're not talking about like what's the average outcome. You wanna think best scenario, the amount of work that goes into ranching, you could go these other routes and like in 10 years, you're a millionaire. In 10 years, you've got, you know, your house paid off. In 10, but with ranching, it's like in 10 years, okay, I've acquired these three lease places that I've got a total of 43 cows on, and I've got four horses. I've learned how to day work, and my my I, my total income for the year is 37500 you know, and I don't pay much in taxes because I spend so much of that on expenses. Mm-hmm. Now, the most important thing is like most of those guys that are that last thing I just described right. would rather have that than a million dollars, which is what I completely respect 100,000%. And that's, that's the route I'm in. Mm-hmm. I know these other ways that a person can make that money. A lot of people just don't understand that. They just They can't wrap their mind around it. Well, they start going down this road and they realize like, oh, okay, wait a second. I can't go down this road and be at re- the late, retire at yeah. 58. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. In my $300,000 home. Yep. You know, it, but like, it's like Nick freaking got it, I think, I, for now. But I just, I, I warmed him up to what, because what he was wanting to do, he's wanting to, like, learn how to shoe horses. He's wanting to learn. I was like, there's a route. you can. There's guys that, like, they'll pay off a place shoeing horses. You hustle your butt off, yep. you know. But it's going to be a lot of hard work. Your back's going to be really sore. It's going to take you longer than if you went this route, you know, that your parents went with their um, profession. But if it makes you happy, that's fine. Yeah. That's what, this is what you need to do. You need to be a farrier. If you, so it makes you happy. Yep. But. 
And that's rodeo. I mean, these guys, you see these guys that, oh, man, he made $140,000 riding bareback horses. Well, yeah. <laughs> Make, he, he spent a lot of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I made, uh, yeah. What yeah. did I walk away with? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. After the tax, man. Hey, if you break even, that's a free vacation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is the words of Sterling Crawl. I, I love that. Like, I, I, I love his mindset about things. And, like, yeah. I wish I could think like that all the time, but I love that. And then, and then there's guys like Jacobs who are super wise with their money. I remember, I mean, we were roommates. Like he might have won, he might have won thirty eight hundred the night before, and he's getting, he's 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 gonna make two or three eggs for lunch. He's gonna drive back to the house from campus instead of paying twelve dollars for lunch. Yeah. After he just made thirty eight hundred the night before, he's gonna drive home and spend a dollar eighty on his lunch rather than spend the twelve. So you can imagine after ten years of successful rodeoing. Somebody with that mindset can build up some equity in, th- in some things, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're smart with what you – that's the other thing. I asked Will Lowe that a long time ago, and he was like – we were coming back from Pendleton. We were talking about money, and he was just like, it's it's all about what you do with what you get. Yeah. You know, you can, you can stay in a teepee on the road rather than a hotel, and you can do this and that, and – that's how you make. Yeah. If you're not good with a little bit of money, why would you be good with a lot of money? That's why people win the lottery and go bankrupt all the time. Money exposes people. Yeah. Money exposes people, just like social media. Social media is not the problem. People that have a problem on social media have a problem without it. Somebody that's insecure on social media, they're going to be insecure without it. Yeah. Same thing with money. It's a mirror. Social media and money are mirrors in life. We're getting real serious. <laughs> Who do you think you resemble the most from the office? I put about nineteen Michael Scott gifs. <laughs> he's the he's the. It's the. Beard. We don't have enough. We don't have enough time wasting parties though. Here we have time wasting. We went to lunch for it. Took us like an hour and a half. Yeah, that was one time this week. Yeah, no. When, we used to, go, the we used to do lunch a lot. Yeah. When's the last time you called everyone into the conference room? Yeah, exactly. I do that once a week. It needs to be every day. Every day. Conference room. Fifteen minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds now <laughs> it probably wouldn't hurt to do a conference room meeting every day to be honest those are good everybody's like gets to learn where the yeah right now uh, but i was wearing a beanie at the beginning of this you guys obviously saw that but right now it's like freaking four degrees outside so we're all inside all day there's most days we're not a normal week we're not in here that much but right now yeah, we're missing out. My eyes are wearing on me from staring at a computer screen for so long. What do you What do you want to do in your break? You're going to take a break. Well, tomorrow's Saturday, so that's your one break. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you. You said your eyes are wearing on you. Oh. I know. I was looking well, that, at my phone. Oh. Yeah, I thought you were reading a question, but that's a question to Donnie. Donnie, what are you doing with your break? I'm probably going to work out this weekend, both days, maybe twice a day. Probably going to come here and shoot a video that you've been asking me to shoot. Are you nervous about that? No, I'm not nervous about it, but I don't want anybody out there that can... I need to work in solitude. (laughs) (laughs) He's so self-conscious. We're doing the top wrecks of 2020. Or no, top wreck... Top... Top 10. Top 10 wrecks on the beaches of Winnebago. But the show itself will be top 10. We can do other... We can do other things besides wrecks. What are you going to call it? The Donnie, Rode- Ray, Daytona, no, extravaganza. It's the Rodeo Time Top Ten. Okay. Are you in nine of the top ten? I am in two of them, I think. Yeah. They're pretty good wrecks. Yeah. And there's some hidden gems in there that people don't know about. Really? Or, or they just probably might have forgotten about. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a high bar. Up Carl there. Wayne didn't make it when you were there. He's not in there. He could have. That's not really a wreck. That was more of like. No. Yeah. No one got wiped out on that. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, you should have let him go and let him hook you. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If he would have picked up Donnie or I, that would have been. I was ready for him been. then. I had already fought him once. I was ready for him then. That's true. You had. Did that make it? You getting hooked by him? I don't think so. It, it can still. We haven't done it. 
but I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. Actually, I didn't want to put too many of myself in there because then I feel like like this you is know the what? Donnie show. Like, look at me. Like, yeah. You know what would be? Uh, that's hello. Welcome to my life. <laughs> it's okay if someone else does that for once. <laughs> All right. Um, what would be cool is like a 10 second intro of like half a second or however many of you got like boom, 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 yeah. boom like all the wrecks. Just yeah. like zoom, zoom, zoom. I've been working on my like broadcaster voice though. Like yeah. just, like, I can't wait to see it. I think you're going to be good at it. That's yeah. why I suggested it. Who is someone you look up to and was your idol as a kid? Um, John Wayne. Well, I thought they were talking about somebody living. I was going to say. He died long before yeah, you but came I, around. Yeah, but I watched him all the time. That's all I watched. Actually, That's all I watched. And I said, anyone who rodeoed for a living, I thought was pretty cool. Making a living, at, but being a cowboy was always my first and second plan. As far as a particular person outside of my old man, of course, this guy was a pretty big influence on my picture of what a cowboy is. And this picture of me and Baxter Black. I listened to Baxter Black cassette tapes at night, every night in my room. We didn't have TV and now I'll recite them to stay awake on late night drives. Was that the first time you'd met him when we were at the American? No, no, I've, I've met him a few times. Oh, okay. We all, because I always bring up random poems and he'll get real excited. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily remember me, but I met him when I was like 14. Then I met him when I was. You were excited. Oh, I'm. Because your brother and, and Fallon and I were standing there watching you. Dude. I'm telling, like, I'm not lying. Like, I would You're like tape a kid. after tape after yeah. tape, cassettes, like, <laughs> by my bed. Like, I'm staring at the ceiling, listening to The Chase and The Oyster, and The Buckskin Mare was my favorite. It was this 15-minute, God, it's such a good story. He said it took him six weeks to write it. But it was just all these cow, he's such a cowboy. Mm -hmm. Like, he was a vet. Yeah. And he team roped, and he's a cowboy. So, like, and he's and he's an artist. Right. So he puts these pictures in your mind, and you just listen to him. And hit some of some of my most favorite that he tells are just like some simple little like two or three minute. Just, I, let me see if I can remember one. Is the jerk? Is that one of his poems? The jerk. Uh, that old guy was telling it at the sixes, and it was about a maverick steer or a maverick oh, bull. Oh, uh, Buster McClower. Yeah, Buster wrote that i think okay i think that's what it was called the jerk because like at the end of it he's like at like this 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 maverick was jumping this canyon or a little gully or whatever and he said he his back feet cleared the ground just as he jerked his slack and that was like the last line i think it's called the jerk yeah i could be wrong i remember i think you're right i think you're right um let me see if i can remember this Sometimes it's weird telling a poem in front of people. So if I stop midway through, it's just because it's awkward because y'all are looking at me weird. I'm try I just want to like see if I can remember one of them. I haven't told one in a long time. My old man knew a lot of them. The, he and I could together recite the Buckskin Mare, which was like a 15-minute poem. But it it took both of us. Uh, I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> I'll do it one by myself. Sorry. Wow. Wow. What Talk about with? letting the air out of the tires. That's what they they do at them <laughs> poem clubs, like the the coffee poem clubs. Like oh they snap yeah, one, and they don't clap they instead snap. of applause. Yeah, do they really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting. I don't know. It goes back to like the '60s. He's got a black hat and he's broke. He's lean as a bicycle spoke. With fire in his eyes. It ain't no surprise. He's a cowboy. That ain't no joke. That's the start of it. I'm not gonna tell the rest because y'all are. Looking at me weird. And then I also, <laughs> <laughs> who is someone you look up to? And, what, and same question, I put Craig Cameron. Um, mm -hmm. I do like old Craig. A couple summers there. That was he was a huge influence. I don't. He never knew how much of an influence. He he will never know. You but, know, you can look up to Craig <laughs> just for his ability to be on camera. He's one of the easiest people right. I ever filmed. Yeah, he's a he's such a gifted communicator. One one take. Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's gonna say, and he brings that level of energy that you beg for. The the thing I love about is just like he's it's always so much fun. Like he's he's like a fun guy. Yep. You know, it's a serious profession training horses, but man, he's right fun. up until you park on his grass. <laughs> 
He's like, <laughs> that's what's funny about him. He's like nitpicky about some things that are like, that will get him stirred up. Yeah. And he'll like, him getting mad is funny, as long as it's not mad at you. Yeah. 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 But uh, Sykeston Rodeo, hopefully, it's my favorite rodeo of the year. Last year, they didn't ask me till July, and it's in August, and I was already booked. So ask me that question again in July, and I'll let you know. That was like a subtle plug, like Saxon let me know earlier. This year. <laughs> right? Are you listening? Yeah. They're like, man, too. Like, he didn't let us know till the end. I was like, don't ask me two weeks ago. Man, I want to go to that one, too, because, like, it's a free trip home. Well, we just had that other deal going. I was yeah. like, man, I, I could have. But favorite baseball player of all time and why? Nolan Ryan. And I put a picture of him punching Ventura. <laughs> forgot about that that dude was a beast when i was growing up i just wanted to <laughs> i wanted i collected dallas cowboy football cards and nolan ryan like he was the only baseball player i had a book full of if you had a star on your helmet you're going in this book if you're nolan ryan you're going in this book <laughs> and this one said you and cody whitney and i said he's not really my type so i don't think it'd work out but he's a great bull rider y'all ever met jeremy bottles uh-uh. oh cody whitney they say they're the same person, but not really. Have I? I don't think so. Okay. You know Cody Whitney, I think. You've probably met him a little bit. Probably through Sadie. I want to say he might have been the bull riding director one year. He was. He was bull riding director one year. Huh. Yeah. Sounds PRCA. Really yeah, not like. Yeah, the, I know. But you know I'm great with names. Not like that. <laughs> if I saw his face. I'm good with faces, yeah. Yeah. Favorite pair of boots, RC custom boots for ranching, Barstow boots for rodeo. How do you become an intern? Oh, my gosh. So I had this kid, again, I said I would talk about this on podcast because I've got, you know. It's just like the employees. ranching question. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ask Donnie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you become an intern? Don't. This kid is just like, he tells me, I like quick interactions on my DMs, you know, like, Sometimes people will tell a really long story, and it's not that I don't care. I just no, a certain is. amount of time it is. <laughs> that I want. Like I want to. It just gets lost. About, like <laughs> yeah, in translation. Well, sometimes they'll tell me like, the question is, are you going to be in Sykeston? But they tell me this long story about how their dog did this thing, and <laughs> yeah, like there's this one email I responded to this morning. She was like telling me how she she went on for a paragraph about how she was in a toxic relationship and that's why she was away from barrel racing but now she's back into barrel race anyway she wanted a sponsorship <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I get that question a lot <laughs> but, I was, I was like, but now i know all about this toxic relationship she was in and yeah anyways it's just like all right what's what is it that anyways uh this person goes on and on about his current job and blah 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 and at the end of this very long yeah. paragraph it is he's telling me the things that you know his dreams and his desires and his current situation oh he's in the oil field two weeks on two weeks off um or something like that and uh and he was just like and so basically same thing he wants a ranch yeah you know he wants to have a ranch and he wants a rodeo and he needs somewhere to learn but he's two weeks on two weeks off and um he wants a job and i was just like Man, what am I supposed to do for the other two? <laughs> right. And I was like, how, there's nothing in there. About, like, I'm, I don't know you from Adam. You know, you're just oil fill rig pants 47. You know, like that's, you're like, this Instagram just pops up. <laughs> and it's just like, you don't just walk up to the girl that you have a crush on. Hey, date say, me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, you know, like I got this problem. You know, my mom, she run off and this and I'm lonely and, uh, um anyways you're hot let's date you know so i you think i just, used that line yeah <laughs> yeah anyways so to become an intern like the point is is like i got i got like Leroy, i got family i got these friends i got a town i live in like if all it is is i'm just trying to like fulfill someone's dream like why why don't i just get these other 483 people that are in line in front of you <laughs> you know <laughs> start with my family like hey i need to get somebody's dream come true today i'd like to challenge you on that number but i think you might be right 
<laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm not going to help somebody out, and I'm not saying I'm not going to give a gift. I, I, I give in private, and I've done that a lot. But I'm saying if you want something from someone, you got to give them value first. Like, Yeah, that's the story you're supposed to tell. That's what I'm saying. This is my value. This is what I'm going to do for you. Come in here and be like, hey, look, I know that you put out a lot of videos. I taught myself how to edit. I can make you videos. I'll work in the warehouse. I'll do whatever you want for free. I am a shirt folding fool. For free. <laughs> if I get to learn about ranching a little bit, I will. But I just want to work for you for free and observe. You're on your way. That's the son of a gun that I'm going to be like, okay, let's have another conversation. Let's have another conversation. I'm listening. I'm li that's it. That's what I say. That's no guarantee. <laughs> but you got my attention. Yep. You say something like that. Like meet meet my needs. Then, anyways, I'm saying like do that with anybody. You go into a job interview, and the first thing you tell them is like, "Hey, we get paid every Friday, right? This isn't like a <laughs> two times a month kind of deal." Because I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that in the, your first interview. You know that's what th he's doing. I'm like, bro, hit me up a little different. He's like, man, you're right. I was like, I was like, reread that and tell me why I should hire you. You know. So, anyway, I talk about that a lot. Yeah. Boy, this sounds personal. But you're right. I mean, <laughs> there's so many of these kids that are just like, there's like, and you see it now yeah, too. Yeah, I because see it all you're time. On rodeo time, and they're like, even when they do, most of them, even when they do say anything about like doing editing and warehouse stuff, it's like, yeah, I, I'll do that stuff too as long as I get to right ride and do whatever you know. Yeah, like, I get it. Like you, if you come here and you freaking kill it, like I'm gonna make sure. I mean, like, i.e. Donnie. Donnie works when he's at work. You know, sometimes he rolls in. You know, a couple <laughs> hours late, whatever. But once he gets there, <laughs> once he gets rolling, he's working. You know, and when he clocks out, he clocks out. And then I'm gonna help him with it. You know, like Donnie's got a dream. I'm helping Donnie. Y'all see me helping Donnie. Like I'm not gonna just leave you hanging. But, like, give me, let's make it this back and forth thing. You know, you don't want it to be a charity. You're not going to enjoy that. Donnie wouldn't enjoy that if I was doing him a charity. He's the kind of guy that he doesn't like to, right? No, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't. He's trying to disagree with you. You put him on the spot. Because I'll give to charity. i got, like, five charities I give to. But it'd be boring to just have you praising me all the time. I've, I just, the only reason why, I like, we, we talk about it all the time just because, like, I respond to messages. It's probably two hours of my day. Every day. I'm responding to DMs. I'm responding to text messages. And so it, it, I get, like, 60% of those. So 60% of two hours are spent on me responding to those three questions. How do I get started rodeoing? How do I get started ranching? Mm -hmm. I have this dream. I want to come work for you learning how to rodeo and ranch, and I want you to pay me. And that's my dream. Plus, I need two weeks off a month. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> and so, you hire someone like that, I ain't gonna be around. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that's what I'm dealing with. So in these podcasts, yeah. people are like, "Man, I ain't gonna last day or nothing." That's not it. I just deal with a lot. Of, I get blunt. I've yeah. gotten yeah. blunt. But it's stuff that's going to help you with anything. Total feeds. You we get, get the same thing. We get letters. We get handwritten letters sometimes. And it'll be like, I'm thinking about <laughs> starting to rodeo. Would you sponsor me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm thinking about getting my card and starting a rodeo. Can you sponsor me? <laughs> I got I to gotta tell you that, that, that very same, that one I was talking about this morning. Uh, where's it at? The 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 woman that wanted okay. Um, I used to barrel race for years, and I had gotten out of it about a year ago because of a toxic relationship I was in. Blah blah blah. And I was over. I started barrel racing again. I'm looking for some sponsorships. I would wear your stuff, and I would tell people about your stuff all <laughs> over the world. I've I've always loved barrel racing, and um. I'd put your patches on my shirt, and uh, and you would get announced at barrel races, which I've never heard. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do a name change. 
I got a little, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you reached out. Are you suggesting we team up with each other and find sponsorships? I've been looking high and low as well, and I can't find crap. Do you have any leads? Who should we call next? I know this is a big ass, but what if you sponsor me? Think about it. Could work. I will wear your name on my socks, and you pay me. I don't know, 1000 a month? That's only a few thousand a year. Think about it. I'll have my people get with your people and set up automatic draft into my account from yours. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like, <laughs> be, am I so? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. They, but but people just want. Like, I'm sarcastic. That was very sarcastic, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny though i was just having fun i was just being funny but people don't realize too that i'm just a normal guy like i like you, to rodeo you remember that last time i'm you... sitting here with my sponsor <laughs> <laughs> you remember that last time that last barrel race you did <clears throat> no exactly <laughs> okay i thought you were being serious <laughs> <laughs> you got me yeah oh, no. <laughs> who doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah Anyways, like it's just this picture. It's just like, how is that ROI pot? Like, I need to send this person some money, you know? <laughs> right? Anyways, what's your favorite bull from JBDB Bucking Bulls? Did y'all see that bull? The little one. If you guys seen my recent Instagram, it's mine and JB's first bull. Did you see it? No. You haven't seen this? No. Watch this. Oh, I saw that. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's a that's a bucker. Yeah. <laughs> that's an awesome first bull. Yes. I'm not gonna say I doubted JB, but like I just I didn't put a lot of thought into it. Whenever you know he and I got together and we were gonna make it like more than just a cap. But you know he he's making that transition, and he wants to do this. He's turning that passion he has for riding <laughs> those bulls into into racing. Yes. Yeah. No, and he's but he's good at it. Yes, that's I would what I'm have, saying. If it would have been anybody else, I would have not done. I would have not done this. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have got involved. But I was right. like, if I'm going to do do this with anybody, it's going to be JB. Yep. Um. When are you going to tell us who the new intern is? I said at the rate he keeps messing up, maybe this December. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry that you guys are mad that the intern is blurred blurred out, but Joe is. If you just knew like how terrible Joe was, it's the most terrible person that I've ever let stay this long without firing him. It's embarrassing. On all fronts. Yeah. Particularly hygiene. I thought you had pretty good judgment, you know, looking at Donnie until I saw this intern in action. Shameful. Yeah, Yeah, Corey. You live with you live with (laughs) He loves to get complimented. What's it like? Living with Joe. Dude doesn't do anything. Oh, my gosh. He's got his dog. <sighs> What's your real name? I said Dale Brisby. Um, and ask about the cowboy hats. Brother. They'll be back in March. Um, we, we sell cowboy hats online. Has PETA ever tried to come after you? I said, I don't know why they Who's would. Peter? I love animals. Exactly. Um. Yeah, and then that's about it. Oh, next intern battle. As of right now, this is a good idea, and I think I want to hear y'all's feedback on this. Hear me out. Jock strap and afraid. One intern at each camp. One at Guacamole, one at West Camp. You got three days to survive. Um, jock straps because naked and afraid. That's just weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, winner gets 20000 and they got to survive i'm hoping johnson Twenty thousand. yeah i'm hoping johnson and johnson will sponsor that okay yeah i uh say that they'll who, who, or whoever Kramer, about 20 whoever, bucks whoever makes the jock straps i'm, th- I'm hoping will i gotta sponsor s- it. i'm gonna have to set up cameras all over the woods no you're in it yeah you I gotta in you it. gotta carry the yeah, camera yeah yeah jock strap and afraid <laughs> no dude you got a chance of 20k it, if you're putting up twenty thousand, yeah i'll do that let's do it monday <laughs> <laughs> negative two degrees monday Oof. Oof. I call <laughs> old. I call West Camp. I was gonna say like this summer, but I thought about that idea when I was at my Gigi's. Yeah. I was super bored. 
Wait till the fire ants wake up naked and afraid. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm pretty sure I get like I I said something about like not that exact thing, but I said something about when me and Wes were interns. I was like, we should do something where we're both one. Oh yeah, that. you definitely have. And you thought you were like that's a stupid idea. You wanted to get <laughs> naked with Wes. Did I say stupid idea? No, you probably didn't say stupid, but you're just. Uh, which just translates the same. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm always thinking production. <laughs> yeah, I'm always thinking production. It's not. It's not that it's a bad idea. It's just that. How are we going to produce this at now? the time? Like, do we have any more low hanging fruit? Yeah. They get a job, jock strap because, and a GoPro on a selfie stick. And it's not because I don't want to make videos that require more time. It's because at the time we were so freaking busy. Yeah, we were traveling everywhere all the time. I miss that. So if we were gonna be, <laughs> if we were gonna be filming something, we only had an afternoon. Yeah. So like to set something up like that, that would potentially take two or three days, especially with prep time and editing. Yeah. Take ten days. Then I get it. I that get was it. why I was like, Stupid well, idea. we better. <laughs> but now. Hold your ground, Donnie. Hold your ground. As of right now, the next thing on the list, like I said, because Sykeston doesn't like to call till July if they call at all. Well, they, in their defense, they probably didn't know if it was going to happen or not. Yeah. I don't, yeah, no, I get it. I understand. But I'm just saying, whether we do or don't go to Sykeston, the next thing that we're going to that's actually on the calendar right now is NFR. Wow. Dang it. So I'm we gonna got, be here for eleven months straight. <laughs> so we got time to do these videos. Now it's more appealing. Yeah. You know in, what I'm saying? In twenty nineteen, I wanna say we did as a family, we did thirty five shows on the road. Yeah. Those days are long gone. Yeah. Like I'm looking at three, not because three this year. Not because we're not gonna get back to a normal pace where people can be right. around each other. But I just think for your company and for my company, it's just like we had to do this like survival thing where we survive without this, the being on the road. And well, now and we don't have to, we it, get to be more picky. Yeah. And you're doing the same and thing. Like you just make more content. You what? I like to be on the road. <laughs> well, hopefully soon you're on the road on your own. Yeah. And you're not having to, because that you're was not another coming with me. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. But I'm saying like it won't conflict with something we got going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the new because it's like Donnie's like, I'm going to be gone Saturday. He's like, okay, well, we ain't going to be doing crap anyway. Yeah. Might as well be gone Saturday. Go to a little rodeo here and there. Snowboarding or skiing? I said I board not very well in Leroy's, Leroy skis. I did miss that music fest dude yeah i was gonna get to go <laughs> to where is it and it's in uh, steamboat yeah oh man january 4 through 8 is like it's normal it's, it's always the same dates that was i grew up right on the other side of the colorado border in western kansas so that was my playground i thought you were from the dakotas as a little kid we moved there when i was 14 i uh i freaking love steamboat yeah i love skiing and i love Beautiful. those texas music country artists <laughs> I used to date a girl from Steamboat. Yeah. Sucked. A George Strait song. She, uh, I can't remember how it goes. Something about... She's bailing hay out of, outside of Steamboat. Training springs. horses. Yeah. And she was and she was handy with horses, too. Really handy. God, here we go again. Ugh. Hey, you know what this is? <laughs> I'm just saying it was it's just funny violin. that like while we were dating, that song came out. <laughs> Can you guys hear that? She's riding there? colts outside of Steamboat's... <laughs> Brings. That's what the lyric says. What is it? I'm not complaining. Like it was very. We we dated. It was fun. We it both, was mutual. <laughs> the breakup was mutual. It, it was mutual. And when people say it's mutual, it most ne it most of the time never is. Yeah. Yeah. I broke her heart. No, I didn't break her heart. That's How true. long is this going to go on, Donnie? Forever. He kept doing the thing. That's the only reason why we're still talking about it. He was doing the little violin. I think he was trying to cut you off. If you had to choose another profession, what would it be? And I uh, only ever wanted to be a cowboy. I wanted to rodeo and ranch, and third was always the military. That was like, I wanted to go work on the Pitchfork Ranch growing up. Mm -hmm. But when you're a camp man, you can't just go rodeo on the weekends. So, rode, because and rode, I couldn't not rodeo. So, it was rodeo and then day work. But I always had a dream of like the Marines or 
being Marines. special forces. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Very strongly considered it, but I couldn't take four years away from rodeo. They don't take just anyone. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. I was I was prepared for that. <laughs> I thought I was. I probably wasn't, but there's no telling what would have happened because, you know, we ended up being in Iraq for a long time. Yeah. But Yeah. Yeah, my brother in the the first uh well like all my uncles and great uncles, they all served uh World War Two. My like my grandma had uh a son and four brothers all serving at one time. Dang. Yeah, at various places in World War II. My my great-grandfather and his, his uh, most of them were Army. My great-grandfather and his twin brother served in World War I over in the trenches. And my brother, he got pulled in. He was just doing, he was just a weekend warrior in the guards. Yeah. And the first uh, desert storm broke out. And next thing you know, he's in Saudi Arabia for a year. And his daughter, his first daughter was born like a couple months in. Wow. And he had three days to come home, see her born. Oh, they let her come home? Had him come home for three days? And then back he went. Do they st- do, do they all get to do that? I have no idea. <clears throat> it happens, I think. Dang. But, yeah. So I, I can't imagine holding your kid for three days. I didn't know 72 you hours. It's almost worse. Yeah, yeah, because like you're not even over the jet lag before you're, you're getting right. back on the jet. Yeah, it's the other side of the world. But he he served almost by accident. God bless his wife. Yeah, she was a trooper. Believe me, they all got to be. Mm-hmm. But I yeah I love them. We love the military. I didn't serve. I have so much damage growing up. Um, you know, my joints and my oh head injuries. Oh, my gosh. Everything. Here we go again. I wouldn't have made it. How? Uh, Here we go. F- I'm telling you, it's not It's yeah. not everybody makes the cut. Get out the glucosamine pills. <laughs> Where the, where's the joint pills? I admire the people that do it. Yeah. I always thought I was going to serve growing up. My dad served. Yeah. I think everybody pretty much expected me to because I don't think they expected me to go to college and right. graduate. Yeah. Well, you showed them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. Look at me now. <laughs> no, we weren't, you know, we weren't active in anything, any wars when I was coming of age. And uh, uh, Desert Storm hit. I was 21. I was uh, in my junior year of college. And I remember some guys my age, you know, got pretty fired up. And they they enlisted. And it was over before they got to basic training. Yeah. It was very different. It's not like this, you know since 9-11 right so then they were just they had a desk job somewhere you know for four years yeah. man i can't imagine like how different my life would have been but like i i basically it, got, it came down to like i couldn't imagine going that long without being on a horse like i very seriously considered it for mm-hmm. a time right and then like as i got more and more serious about it like i started running like we were, it was me and another buddy. We were gonna go. He couldn't pass the test, right? <laughs> His deaf ass couldn't hear good enough, apparently. Yeah. Which we didn't even know, Chris Mills. If you're out there, Mills, sorry, but <laughs> we made fun of him so much for that. He was smart enough. He was everything. But we were running every day because you had to like run thirty yeah. miles under a certain time limit, you know. Right. And uh, but just the more I thought about like because when you're, you know, in high school. Four years is an eternity. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. So you, it's your whole life. I didn't. Like, I really didn't think I had the discipline for it. Honestly, that's what scared me the most. I think four that's initially years. why I didn't go. Like I didn't go. Like four years. Like looking back, four years is nothing. Yeah. Like right. Four years would have been nothing. Yeah, I regret it. I would. I wish I would have served at the time. Just done my part. I don't. I don't want to say I regret it. I just because there's just no telling. Yeah. I mean, we we probably wouldn't. Being honest, like none of us would be in here if any one of us would have gone. It's possible that right this whole story is different. Right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. That I've I just and I've always wondered like what I would do in a situation like that. You know, just because like you watch the movies or you hear stories from buddies. Like I had a rodeo buddy that was like in it. Yeah. He graduated. We I've talked about him on the podcast before. Ross Sherrod. He's a bareback rider. Mm-hmm. I think actually last two or three podcasts was the first time I ever talked about him, but like he, he graduated, uh, basic training sitting in the airport about to go back to his job training 
on September 11th, 2001. Wow. He watches it from an airport TV. Wow. Like he's a Marine, just got out of basic training. Wow. So he's standing there when they pulled the a statue down of... Uh, That's right. Of uh, what's his name? Saddam. Saddam. Yeah, Saddam. Saddam. I, he didn't I even watched, know they were going to do it. He said no, he was like sitting. we talked about that yeah. because I watched that live. He was telling me about it. He was sitting facing the other direction. Yep. He like turned, looked over his shoulder, and he saw this statue fail. Yep. He tells stories about like uh, um, clearing out the world's largest cemetery. So they got like tombs. They got caskets on, or like uh, like above ground. Yeah, mausoleums and stuff. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And like they go through it. Snipers on the other side. And like take some like days weeks to clear this out um hotels with the electricity off with Holy high value cow. targets in it he goes like 40 days with this like suit on wearing this suit where it's uh like sealed because they were worried about what's it bio warfare? chemical warfare yeah. yeah chemical at the time yep. you know because it was all so new and yep. so he had to wear the 40 days didn't take it off for 40 days and uh in there like out there for 40 days and uh i was like because he rode bareback horses rode bareback horse still rides bareback horse really good mm -hmm. and i was like if if like any he, he, he got a medal for this one interaction like his commanding officer or whatever got shot and he had to take over and he like did a bunch of stuff there's a guy shooting at him from like 10 feet away shot at him like four times and missed and then he didn't miss mm -hmm. you know with his one shot and uh, it might have been like five or six times because this guy was shooting at him with an AK, but just he's like, I don't know how this guy didn't hit me. Like, we're facing each other 10 feet it's away. It's wider. It was, yeah, it was like a Western. Yeah. Anyways, he ends up getting this medal, whatever. And I was like, so, and I, I just always assume it's like um, you have one or two of those interactions in your four years. He was like, well, he went over there for two tours, nine months each. And I was, and he was, I was like, if that's a 10, how, you know, on the scale, adrenaline, one to 10. Like how often did it get get above a seven point five or an eight? Or he said every day, every day, while they're over there, those first couple. Yeah, it was bad, man, over there in Fallujah because right. they're clearing out houses. Yep. Because they announced like, hey, y'all got to get out of this town, and so if somebody's still there, yep, they're assumed to be Hostile. so they got to go. Yeah, they're literally in. going house to house. Yeah, house to house. They don't know what's like kicking down doors. Mm -hmm. You kick down the door. He said like chickens will fly up, dogs run across. <laughs> oops <laughs> i can't imagine but that's the part like i just say that just say like i can't imagine what i would do yeah you know, i'd like to think i'd be this big hero uh, but who can, how can you really tell you until you actually do until it you're there yeah yeah think about that uh the card game we did when the guys were talking about their work you asked them their worst job you know the the job that makes you appreciate what you do now and you think about not oh nobody, when we were talking to craig and all mm -hmm. them yeah, we asked them that. You think about that with those soldiers. Like, they've all, that is, that's all right. their worst job. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I'll do anything now. Right. Everything's gravy now. That's, and it's <laughs> funny because that's how Ross was. Ross and I, like, we lived together. We rodeoed together. He, I've been the most miles with Ross. And, um, like, we've been in situations, we had jobs together. We worked at the, at Large Animal Vet Clinic at A&M, mm -hmm. training horses. And, uh, like a horse gets out on the highway and Ross is like, all right, let me get the, you got the keys to the truck. <laughs> so freaking cars are honking and like, going crazy. And Ross is like, do you want to take that? Are you riding with me? Oh, but, okay. I'll drive. You're driving. Okay. I'll drive. And I'm just like <laughs> freaking out. And Ross is like, and, like him getting shot at from 10 feet away <laughs> yeah. with an AK 47 it's like it just like stayed with him yeah and bareback riding you know the only time he really struggled with bareback riding was when his he's just sitting on the back of this horse like too calm really that's the only time he really ever it's just like he got shot at yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> every day right. you get your adrenaline pumping that much and now all of a sudden there's this bucking like horse his know? heart rate doesn't go over 60 when he's on a tough as freaking nails too and uh, i think it was woodward this uh he's on a colt i think it was woodward Anyways. where they left him tied in yeah the gate man just those gate guys poor guys usually it's a committee member 
and they only crack latches at like one rodeo a year. Yeah. A lot of them now they'll use like a, the stock contractor, but some of those rodeos, like they insist, like the gate, the, the committee will bring a certain level of help, which is great. It's so awesome. It's just a tough position because like sometimes they're doing something important and they've only been, that's the one weekend a year they do it. Yeah. Right. They don't do it every weekend. So like he's, he's sitting there ready to open this gate on this bareback rider and it's a colt and ross nods and so he opens the gate but it only goes six inches because he forgot to untie it also because oh, you know those those bucking shoots will flex yep so you got a time you latch them and you time this freaking horse he goes goes freaking rears up like this gets ross kind of rolled back then the guy like shuts it untied it and then opens it. <laughs> so this horse comes up. Ross on the end of his arm, brings him from the south end, and just slams him on the front of the buck and shoots. Oh, oh shit. Just crushed his face. Oh, my God. He said, guys that I knew that were there, I wasn't with him that weekend, but um, he said, it looked like he poured out a five, uh, a, not five gallon, but like a, a, a milk jug full of blood on the ground in front of it. That's what it looked like. Broke everything. Teeth, nose, skull, face, all of it. He just gets up and walks out. No expression, no nothing, doesn't knock him out, and just walks out of the arena and goes and sits on the deal. Never misses a beat. Remembers all of it vividly. Yeah. Like the toughest bastard I've ever so, met. I'd, ra- I'd rather not so, be so that back. tough. I think I'd rather just get knocked out. I'm telling you, like, stands up and walks out like this right here. Just opens the gate for himself. <laughs> See, back to the, you know, the kid, the teenager that asks you how to get started. <laughs> they need that story. Yeah. They need to know that story really well. Right. Like, yeah. can you do that? You know, can you walk, open the gate for yourself after you get... Can like you that? even be okay with that happen? Like, like, with the consequences right. of that happening? You right. got to know the consequences. Yeah. Like, that's what a lot of people don't know. They, yeah. This I, is dangerous. Yes. Yeah. It's not all fun and games all the time. Like right. it's dangerous. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. It is fun. You, I enjoy doing it. But. Right. I remember talking to somebody years ago, um, who was doing martial arts, and I I grew up with them, and and I I had to ask them like, well, they're talking about you know getting in a fight, doing martial arts in case they get in a fight. I'm like, well, how many punches can you take? Because you're not going to escape the punches. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. You're not going to escape the wrecks mm-hmm. if you get into this that line right. of work. It's coming. Right. They're all coming. Yeah. <laughs> there's a surgery coming. There's a... <laughs> at there's least. A, yeah. At yeah. Least. Some, a teacher of mine told me that one time. He's like, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> like, yeah. I like that. I think it's a Mike Tyson quote. Yeah. But it's... Uh, I will say the event... I mean, like, that hap- Bareback is the roughest. Bareback is rougher than bull riding. Um, bull riding, the thing so bad about bull riding is just because of what can go so wrong yeah. even when you're off the animal. And there's just so many things. Bronc riding is by far out of bears, broncs, bulls, and bull fighting because there's four rough stock events. Um, bronc riding is by far the safest long term. It is the most dangerous, I would say, your first 50, 60, 70 for an average person learning yeah so bronc riding's the most dangerous learning your first 20 30 horses that's why i won't normally let someone learn it here donnie i made an exception but i don't put people on their first bronc often i let them go do that somewhere come come talk to me after you've been on 40 head right i normally do but i wish you would have just told me that though like i did i know but like no not right away i kept telling you i was like i think i'm all right i think i'm all right saddle broncs well, yeah, like, hey, you know, here, get on this bull. Like, we'll just keep doing that. There was a time, I mean, after a minute, like, I, at first I might have ignored it, but, like, I I give that speech a lot yeah. to people. And, like, Garrett Kelly Johnson, like, he went to a school. He got on, like, eight, and then he got here. Mm-hmm. And do you understand now, though? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because bareback riding, you get so many second chances. Yeah, well, you can just muscle something out. Because like, you're locked in there. It's like, bronc riding so difficult to learn because you're using a tool, like you got a tool that you got to know how to use. Yes. Like, 
and it's not just it's not just grit. Like it's part grit, but it's like you got to know how to use your tool, or else you can't ride. If you don't know yeah. how to use, ride your saddle, you can't. Right. It's so crazy, like how each of the three events, how similar they are, but how different the oh, fundamentals yeah. are. The mechanics are very different. Oh my gosh. Like just the bareback ride and having to get your chest out there mm. and your, you know, how you use your, your riding arm against your hip and then your, your free arm is important. You know, like Will Lowe, like the way he handles his free arm is, is, is significant, you know, and, and, uh, your feet in the bareback riding are so significant in the bronc riding they're not the most they they are for like the longevity and the smoothness of the ride but the most important are the lifting and the staying back which is so different from bull riding it's all about going to the front you know and there's different ways you go to the front you hunch over you're done yeah you know and uh anyway they're so different but what is the same i think is the level of fight that you have to get to and the way you use that fight you put the fundamentals in place Mm -hmm. And then you take your mind to a, a place where you're ready to fight. But I don't think you can be like overly mad. Like, uh -uh. because then you'll black out. Yeah. You got to remove emotion. Yeah. Even anger is one that you have to remove, you know, because it'll, it's counterproductive. But, because I've tried that too. Like, I've tried to just get so like pissed off, but that don't, really? <laughs> that don't work. Yeah. You know? no. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You really like, as in you? You think it would work, or you? Yeah. Just surprised. I'm just, it? I'm just surprised the Donnie that that you would do. We lost camera one. We lost camera one. The the thing about um, we'll just kind of make sure. Now I'm not like <clears throat> I don't vocalize like I don't yell and like like, <gasps> like well I'm, like I'm pissed off like that kind of stuff. There, I think two two things. One way that like the the anger side of it can help is like it'll kind of help override any fear. Yeah, you know, but like that's true. You know, like if you're, for instance, if if you were gonna get in a fight with a guy, mm -hmm. you know, and you were really really mad, you're probably gonna ignore like any fears you might have. Like if he's like a foot taller than you and eighty pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. But um, but again, like that anger can work against you but and then bullfighting completely different you know because you're on your feet and you got to breathe and it's a longer fight and you're in control and you've got to constantly be there are fundamentals but it's like you're using them for a long time and somebody asked me um, to talk about bullfighting if you want to learn how to ride, how to fight bulls um, Cody Webster does what's called a bull school and they are um, just phenomenal um, he's, he does them all the time. DM him. What I would do, if you want to learn how to fight bulls and you're serious about it, like you know the risks, you're willing to work hard, like if you just think it's just kind of this thing, you don't need to do rodeo, period. But like if you're severe, if you're um, severely, if you're seriously interested in it, what I would do is DM him and, and then also comment on every post till he responds to your DM. That's how I would get a hold of me too. DM me, text me, and then comment on all my posts for me to check that DM until I do. Anyway. But what were we talking about? <laughs> military? Oh man, I just if you had to choose another what would you have done? That sounds like it would have been military. Ah uh, yeah. Well, not really because I went to college. <laughs> like Yeah. Oh, um, I, I, what I was going to do was try to market grain for a company before I came here. That's what I was going to do. I don't think I would have enjoyed it that much. But Dang. Then you would have just, you would have been stuck in a rat race, huh? Yeah. I don't think that would have worked out for me, though. Uh, I don't think I was built for doing stuff like that. I wasn't built to do things I don't enjoy. <laughs> or that are not helping me build for like something important do you enjoy, how much do yeah. you enjoy editing yeah because i mean you can continue to edit if you don't no do i enjoy editing yeah would you have ever imagined that you would yeah because i fooled around with cameras and stuff when i was like really young like, yeah probably like 10 11 
I had a video camera. I never edited anything, but I like to film stuff. And yeah. I just would watch it back on my little camcorder. You know, that goes back to your thing about getting a job, you know, get, trying some different things out. <laughs> Even if, it's the, if you want to get into rodeo, want to get into ranching, just get some jobs in the field and try them out because you don't know where it leads. I didn't know I liked working video so much and, and video production. I had no idea. I really enjoy it. But you enjoy more the directing side of it rather than the actual I mean. camera side of it. No, yeah, the, the production. You know, I put the, the game plan together. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I wouldn't have known that. But I just took it on myself to just try to learn from people whatever I could. You do something here, you do something. And before my dad needed me full time, you know, I always did his websites and stuff. I was always a computer person, but I, I was flipping houses. And I I started doing that back in the 90s. And I loved it. I'd be doing that right now. It's just, it was fun for me. But I didn't know that, you know, I have a degree in psychology. I didn't know that stuff until I started trying some stuff out. And I was doing stuff that was, I just needed to pay the bills. So trying some stuff out, and you never know. You can come across something um, that's really your calling by accident. Don't think you have it. You know, you don't have to be. Your plan doesn't have to be set in stone. You can still have that dream of having a ranch or something, but uh, work your way towards it. In all, figure out all. You could sit down on a piece of paper and just okay. What are all the things I need to know if I want to be in rodeo? What are all the things I need to know if I want to be in ranching? And pick a couple of those and like, well, let me just go get a job doing that for somebody else. Let them pay me while I learn and see how it works out. You really don't know. You didn't know. I mean, no. well, you, you got put in front of that computer and started editing. You really and you got to be careful when you when you approach that conversation, getting paid to learn something. Yeah. Like, um, you you can't. I don't know. That's you got to find a way to bring value for somebody. You know, like that's kind of what that guy was asking for. He's mm-hmm. like, I got two weeks a month. You know, I want you to pay me to. Uh, learn yeah, but, how to ranch but if a guy comes here and he's like you know i i don't i i want to learn this lifestyle i'm gonna work my butt off and i'm gonna do i'll be here on time and do what you tell me you see what i'm saying i'm still not gonna hire him though just to, just for that like what i'm saying is like i could there's a lot of people if i'm just gonna hire somebody to ranch for me like there's right. a lot of people who i would not i mean i know a guy I know a guy down the road who I could pay who knows way more about cows than any of the interns. And 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 I don't have to teach him anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like I, I here in Winnebago, I can find somebody. Like I know him. We text and like he he he's even hinted at it, you know. And uh, the timing was never right, but like I could go pay him. I love him, love his family. I've done a lot for him, but so if this, if a random Joe wants to come from, you know, anywhere, Nebraska, Tennessee, Missouri, North Carolina, California, Utah, where we've had them all, I mean, we've had them from all over, like, and, and you don't know, so I'm going to have to hold your hand, I'm going to have to teach you, where, and I got to pay you? Yeah, but how is a young person supposed to get experience if they can't get a job? That's not my problem. This is about you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, I'm saying, about, why would I help that person over? I'm talking about giving right advice, down the road. advice to these people that want to get into the business, not that want to be your intern. I don't. I'll give them. The, I, so that's what I'm saying. Like you got to like. There's this list of people. Like what? What's going to cause me to to hire a random person out of Missouri rather than this guy who I know needs it? You know, like, why would I just pay this other guy when, like, I got family that needs it? I got a cousin that could come work for me today. So what's your advice? Offer to work for me for free. Huh. Offer to work for me for free where I'm like, I can't turn it down. Gotcha. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Bring me value. It sounds bad, but on the other hand, like, this choker's dream is coming true. Like, he's now he's on his way to going to the NFR. Because he came in here, he worked for free for a month, for a full month. Usually it's two weeks. But Donnie's like, yeah, I'll come work. And I'd already had Wes here. 
Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I was like, man, I don't need, I even told Donnie, I was like, I don't need another person right now. I can't, I don't want to pay another person right now. If you want to stay. So he stayed another two weeks and, uh, we got a little creative with it. And he was like, I'll work in the warehouse. So then Lisa was like, I love this guy. And I was like, boom, perfect. Moved him over there. He started getting paid. Then eventually got a raise, got another raise. Now he's got an awesome job. And he's, you, you might be making more than you would have been doing grain. Yeah. It's hard do, to say. Do you think? I don't know what you've been making. I um, have no idea about that. But the yeah. point is he's, he's making a living Yeah, and he's pursuing his dream. I'm bringing in guys like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's perfect. There's people in this town. Donnie's a perfect example over that. So, because we're, we're both talking to the same person, mm-hmm. you want to live this lifestyle. I mm-hmm. agree with you. I think that Donnie's in in a good situation. I think that um, all these interns, Gabe's in a good situation. He's from LA. I was like, look, dude, you got to make it worth my while because I got people in my family that could do this job that I could pay. Like the li- the lo- the list of people that yeah that puts me as the business owner in a good position. Right. But now now I know I say that not my problem. It makes me sound cold, but like Yeah, but- I'm I'm not cold because if somebody is like hurting and you're hungry, like I'll buy your meal right now. Here's like the thing. I'll, I'll put a shirt on your back right now. It's not about being kind. There's a time there's a, there's a line where it's like, all right, we can be generous and charitable, but that's, then there's a business But that's business your point. Line. It's a business. It's not exactly. a charity. Exactly. And I don't know how many times I've said that to 100%. you. 100%. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They don't know the perspective of the guy that's paying their check. Like, I got bills to pay. Right. I got bigger <laughs> bills to pay than you do. Yeah. So I can't afford, yeah, I can't afford that. You can say it that way. Like, you got to look at it from my perspective. I need to make money. You're right. I need to make money, um, and and maybe hmm, I don't know how you get that across to somebody. How do you how do you teach somebody what we know without them having to go through what we've done building business? Well, it's kind of fear of the unknown. They're just like they can't get it around their their head. Like, oh man, I'm gonna go work for free. But look at Donnie's situation. Yeah, he had to go a month without getting paid. Mm-hmm. That's not that long. My dad went three years, and I paycheck. forgot about it. He brought it up jokingly a year later. I paid him for two weeks of it. So he had to go two weeks <laughs> without getting paid. Honestly, I had said something like, man, these interns get nice. I freaking worked here for a month or something like One that. Of, somebody, complained, <laughs> somebody complained about or something like that, yeah. and he made a joke like, well, shoot, I went longer than any of them. So I went back and paid him for it because, like, it's worked out. And the point is, is, like, I, that's – just for the record, I've worked for free for a lot longer than two weeks. <laughs> That's what I'm like, saying. But you go to a somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. You go, if you go somewhere, like a rodeo time or anywhere, mm-hmm. and there's somebody like me who's just a just a, a honest person, they're not going to let you provide them more value than they do you mm-hmm. for very long. Right. So you see what I'm saying? Yep. So like, like – um, especially once Donnie like because Donnie was like yeah I'll do anything so then he was working in the warehouse and then he was like influencer marketing type stuff like he was coordinating with influencers sending a merch which was really big because I was he took that off of my plate that was my job like I would right. get their address and I would type it in the computer and I would fill the so he took that and I was like oh my gosh he's killing it then he started editing that's how we make our living and so anyways the point is Donnie made himself. I, I got to where I was like, he's bringing me more value than I am him. Right. I don't like that. I want to. I want it to be a constant battle, mm-hmm. in a good way. I don't like that. Like now, all of a sudden, we're battling for like. I want to bring him fifty-one percent value. He brings me forty. You see what I'm saying? No, you really make me think. Because even even to this day, um, it's about this goes to what we talked about about building relationships. You got to work hard, but you got to build relationships in a business. I think about all the stuff that I give away to m- my friends in the industry, you know, like my content and my time and stuff. I do things for, you know, I'm not going to name drop, but for a lot of other sponsorees, we just, we do that for each other. And I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm not getting directly paid for that, but it's about building that relationship. That's a mindset. Yeah. Like, well, I'll put that, I'll get it back. 
I'm putting that out It'll there. It'll come out in the wash. It'll come out in the wash. I'm going to put that out there. That's the that's the attitude you have to have. Because you got to trust that person. Like, if you don't trust them, then I Wh- think. Like, which person? Both. You got both have to have trust in each yeah. other. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You got to believe in what you're doing. If not, then it's so, just then it's so just a save paycheck. Up, save up at least two weeks of expenses before you come to Winnebago. <laughs> it's going to be at least two weeks of paying your own bills. What? That doesn't sound like that much of a feat. It's not much of a feat. You know what I'm saying? The hardest part for me about not. not getting paid was trying to <laughs> tell my dad <laughs> that I wasn't going to be making. I like, wasn't not getting. I don't paid. Under, see. I don't understand the big dilemma because, um, for instance, I said it on the last podcast. I was talking about trades mm-hmm. as opposed to, and I was like, "Yeah, electrician makes." And, and this guy messaged me, and he was like. You gotta be, you know, you gotta be four years before you're a journeyman before you make serious money as an electrician. I was like, yeah, but you're making money in those four years. Yeah, it may not be a lot in college, and then after those four years, you're making bank, like a lot of money per hour. Comparatively speaking, to some jobs, you could you when you go to college, you pay them yeah. for four years. I don't remember. Uh, you go any, into serious debt. I don't remember KU paying me anything. Then afterwards, when you get your first job, you ain't making as much as that journeyman electrician no. anywhere. No. Anywhere. So because my deal was get you a trade that's a fallback. Don't go to college as a fallback. Get a trade that's a fallback. Right. I love that about Garrett Kelly Johnson. He went to diesel mechanic school, and that was his fallback. So, yeah, he had to pay for it. It was like however long. might have been a year or whatever. But, like, he could he – could, number one, it's going to save him money. Yeah. Number two, and get everybody needs a good mechanic. Yeah, like it's like that's like every per. How many? Who drives a car? Everyone. Every town needs a good mechanic. I'm talking about a fallback. So, but anyways, what I was getting at is like, you're talking about saving up money for two weeks to go somewhere. Like, what I think is a cool idea instead of like, me, one day paying for my kid's college, four years of college, where you just go sit in this class where you're listening to something you're not interested in. Now, if I had a daughter or son that wanted to be a doctor, that's different. You got to mm-hmm. go to school for that. Yeah. You know, you want to be a lawyer, that's different. But if they're just going just to go, rather than we pay for this whatever, or you pay, or the kid pay for it, I don't know if I'm going to pay for it, but if I was going to hypothetically pay for my kid's college, mm-hmm. instead of going for four years to a party town where, you know, you're going <laughs> to learn all this bull crap about being a, growing up and being a, a, a <laughs> an adult, you know, and the experience yeah. of whatever and kind of go to class – why don't I just like give you help with rent and food and set you up with, let's say eight of my business friends in different professions, a veterinarian, uh, uh, a horse trainer, um, a feed company. Um, and they go work for free at all these places. They meet people there. Maybe one of them's like something in the entertainment industry. Yep. Um, you know, I met a musician, whatever, you know, or, or you, they don't even have to be dad's friends, but like you go do it like that to me is intriguing. So like now over the course of like two years, say it's two years, you've worked for eight different companies. Mm -hmm. How much further along? Yeah. You got way more experience than anybody coming out of college. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Now, if somebody is interested in something specific and they want to go to college, that's fine. Or if they got a free ride and somebody's paying for it, why not? Yeah. I get it. Yep. What I'm talking about is like, like then all of a sudden, like you've been a vet tech, you worked at a car dealership, you worked at a law firm, you worked for a horse trainer, you worked for it. Then you're 20 and you've had eight jobs, you know, and maybe you found out which one you like. And, and, and all of a sudden you're, you're 21 years old and you're like, I know for sure I'm not going to do those three things. Mm-hmm. And I'm really interested in these two where you got these you know, 22 year olds coming out of college. They're like, I don't know. Golly. I had you at know. least eight jobs by the time I was 20. Easy. And I'm not saying you got to have it figured out by the time you're 22 or even 30 no. for that matter, you know, but anyways, that's why I think this internship going back to like, you know, even Wes, he caught flack for being here. Yeah. He was here for a year. Okay. Well, you didn't go backwards. Yeah. If you're going backwards, it's on you. Like if you're, if you, even if you go a little bit backwards, like yeah. it's like, like 
by the time, you know, he worked for free for a little bit, but then, you know, he went from line work to this for a year back to line work. Number one, he left with a crap ton of followers Yeah, that he's still monetizing. Yeah. Number two, he got to get on Bulls. He got to meet his yeah. heroes, Dale Brisby and J.B. Mooney and Tuck Donnie Edelman, Daytona. Donnie Daytona. <laughs> you know, he met all these guys, went to the NFR, went to Vegas, went to Wyoming, like did all these things for a year. He's going to yep. talk about this year that he was there for the rest of his for life. The rest of his life. Yeah. Yep. I doubt he's going to, like, maybe his IRA has, like, a little gap in it, but I really doubt it's going to overweigh like what yeah. he, his experience here. That's why I don't get that conversation. And you're not the only one that has to have it. I had to have it with my grandparents, not my parents. Yeah. They just don't understand. Like my granddad never understood. My old man was like, he was entered with me. We went to rodeos together. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, we were talking about, me and my dad were talking about Joe the other day and yeah. like how they're kind of going and stuff. And he's like, how lucrative is that? I was like, well, I mean, it just, that's just the point. Like a lot of people just don't understand. Like it's, it's not about being lucrative. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing too. Like, even if it is about money, like I know a lot of people who don't rodeo that don't have crap to their name. Exactly. You might as well, you know, might as well do something you love to do love. and right. not have anything. Right. But yeah, and you can make money. You can make money. Anybody's willing to pay you well if you're the best at what you do. Yes. That's true of anything. And and <clears throat> living in this country, Joe's 25. Yeah. Joe can do nothing for 7 years. And then the seven years following be have like a house that's paid off and you know twenty five cows and what like have like have it made in the shade so mm -hmm. like like living in this country like if you you can you can we're just not a third world country like there's opportunity here and if you're smart and you work hard then there's all kinds of things that pop up mm -hmm. but being a cowboy is like it's a fun lifestyle and there's ways to make it make it work financially if you're smart about your money. Yeah. But essentially you find out six months, eight months, a year in, like you're not in it for the money. Yeah. And you're not keeping up with the Joneses. Like you're not, you're not flexing on people. Like, yeah. I mean, in ways you are because you're free. Like, right. You, like you, that's my thing about it. Like Rodeo Cowboys especially are the freest people in this country. In the world, probably. 100%. In the world, they are the freest people. They go and do, and they don't answer no one. And that's why it's so emotional at a rodeo on the back of the chutes during the national anthem. It's like, I remember, like, years back, like, like, Granite Falls, Minnesota. And me and Ross and Leroy are there. And we had been there a couple of days and I'm about to get on my bull. I think I was in the first section or something, but it's like National Anthem. I just got my arms crossed, and it's just like a hill, and there's, and I'm in Granite Falls, Minnesota, you know, and I grew up in this Memphis, Texas, little bull crap town, and it was just like, like, man, I'm so free. I got like this, you know, and then, and, and the announcer, he feels the same thing. Everybody on the back of the shoots feels the same thing, and so they go through the spiel of military, and thinking our heroes yep. and it's just like why is he talking about that and and like everybody on the back of the shoot or, or like people in the stands might feel like s s some people may feel that it's semi-cliche you know and that he's just going through the motions of this old school patriotic you know whatever but on, you're on the back of the bucket shoots and you know like you're just like got these chills thinking about it you know i get to get on a bucking horse or a bucking bull and so much freedom in rodeo and you get to choose where you go. Reap what you sow. Yeah. Like that's the cool thing about being your boss. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You can you're being your own boss. You can never get fired and nobody tells you what to do. But the other bad thing is you can never get fired and nobody tells you what to do. Like you gotta be It's it's a lot of stress, but it's different because it's yours. Yeah. You own it. Right. That's a different I don't think a lot of people can do that though. I don't I think a lot of people can. can ever admit that something's their fault. 
and 100%. take her and take her responsibility. Yep. But when you do that, like I was like I was thinking about that earlier. People blame stuff on toxic relationships and quote unquote like fault like think nothing like take your responsibility you know you were you were part of that relationship you were half of it like it's on you just as much as on the other person you know you can blame you can make excuses like that all your life but when until you take responsibility for something like that then stuff gets a lot easier that is a huge unlock right there donnie ray daytona like that's it Mm -hmm. i i try to find i'm trying to find a way that this weather bad weather is my fault yeah when it's your fault you can fix it like you if you gotta look for something to be your fault because if it's not your fault then it's out of your control yeah you know if it's absolutely if it's the president's fault if it's your boss's fault if it's your ex's fault then it's like that just like that barrel racer like it's like if it's if it's her ex's fault, then she's you're stuck. She's stuck. Yeah. Yep. But if she'll take responsibility for it, then she can fix it. Yeah. Now it's going to change things for the next relationship. Now it's going to change things for yeah. When it's your fault, that means there's a way out. Mm-hmm. Is what it means, and it's liberating. It sucks at first. It does suck at first. Like when you when you mess up those first couple of days and sometimes depending on what kind of deal it was or a relationship, whatever, like weeks, months, like it sucks. You got to swallow that medicine, you know, but once you get going again and you're like, Oh man, I get to fix this. I yeah. get to fix it. You know? And that's, you know, in psychology, they talk about that's when, when you're playing the victim, you're never going to get out of that role. And the opposite of being a victim is being a creator. I'm instead of, things happening to me i'm creating the things that happen yeah that's the opposite side of being a victim you know you right. start creating yeah i'm i'm in charge that's a really interesting verbiage for the contrast of victim i like it i like it it's the opposite side creator. the opposite side of a victim is a creator yeah because it's not like a negative thing Mm-mm. the way you word it you know, you would think the opposite side of a victim is a bad thing. Yeah. You know, you hear victim and you're like, all right, well, the other side must be bad. But the creator, there's times when it is, but there's a there's a positive aspect to the, to your wording. I, I'm saying that's the role. If you don't want to be the victim, start being a creator. Start creating your life. Yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. I like it, too. So is that your life advice? Yeah, that's my advice. Corey's like, Corey's like a Jedi master, man. Like, <laughs> that's what he said. I was like, Corey's coming. He's like, how many mics? And I was like, I, if you want to be in it, three. And he was like, well, y'all are always talking about like intellectual stuff. And I was like, <laughs> I'm Corey. Put his hands on me and worked his 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 Jedi mind tricks one time when I was getting on a bucking horse. He's like, you weren't very focused on on that ride. And I was like. How the hell you know that? <laughs> like, you get out of my head. I, like, it, it's like so uh, like Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. Uh, in that Karate Kid. Yeah. You yeah. remember that? Huh? Yeah, I remember that. That sticks with me. Like, he, you know, he's right. I wasn't really there. Like, Donnie had. I, I had one hand in the shoot. I had one hand on Donnie and one hand on the animal. I'm like Donnie, you're not connected. I got a lot more going it. going on up there than what people think. I think sometimes <laughs> I'm like that. There's some people. Malenkin's one of them. Yeah. He's like, I got to be careful what I say around you because you'll remember it. Because he'll yeah. say something, I'll be like, that kind of contradicts what you told me in 2012 <laughs> on our drive <laughs> to Henderson, Texas, at that rodeo when you said this. <laughs> like I'll bring it up like like I'm like I'm as like I'm an ex or something. Yeah. He's like, gosh dang it, I did say that. You know, he's like, well, that was nine years ago, Dale, yeah. and I've changed my. Anyways, like there's in court, right? Yeah, there's... judge, I'd like to present the evidence <laughs> to the contrary. <laughs> but then there's some stories somebody will say, and I'm like, I have no recollection of that, you know. Yeah. And I was sober. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying, like, there's some things I don't remember. But there's there's some people when I'm actually listening, oh, that's why. I, like, I hate it when people say like I'm terrible with names. I'm like, well, of course you are because you don't put value on it. If somebody, I, if somebody says to you, somebody says to me, my name's Mike, and I got a $10,000 check for you that you need to come pick up at 432. <laughs> you talk to me at 402, I know who the hell I'm going to meet at 432. 
His name is Mike, and he's got a ten thousand dollar check for me, and I'm gonna be standing right there. You know what I'm saying? Like I place value on Mike. I remember. His I name remember, was Mike. His name was Mike Hunt, by the way. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that last night. I remember being at the convention center, Cowboy Christmas Sunday morning, waking you up at nine in the morning because <laughs> the stage was lit, the cameras were on, and everybody's looking at me. Where's Dale? I'm like. Dale, you know you're supposed to be down here on stage with my dad, right? Oh, what time? In 20 minutes. And you were at the Mirage. <laughs> gambling, drinking and gambling. <laughs> drinking I was, and gambling. I was not hungover, and I was not, that that had nothing to do, there was no. Memory like an elephant. Wanted to ride off to town. <laughs> no. Drink and gamble. Drink and gamble. <laughs> no, that was different. He, like He drinks and gambles so much, they literally put his face on one of the tables. I gamble a little. <laughs> I set a limit right? and I gamble a little, but I don't drink, even when it's free. I get them. Sometimes they'll have chocolate milk. You were they the, like roll their eyes. You like, were at the I'm Mirage. I'm gonna tip you. Just bring me chocolate milk. You were at the Mirage every night. Yeah, because I hosted the <laughs> VIP party. Oh, he hosted. That was fun. I hosted. Yeah, <laughs> me and Matt West. Up you should have been there. That was a that was a badly no bone party. That's the, that's the spot in Vegas. Like things have shifted around. You know, like. You go like 10 years ago, might have been the MGM, but like right now, it's the Mirage, and you got to be there. They're going to have the – anyways, I'm not trying to plug because I don't even have a deal with them right now. I like Matt. Matt's funny, though, because he's – I he's, really like he's, Matt. When he's on, he's so on, but when you know him in person, he's he's such a quiet, you know, genuine person. He's just pretty easy totally. to be around. Totally. There's people that you're around, and you're like, man, it would be awkward to ride in a car with you for four hours to a rodeo. But then you get around Matt, and you're like, yeah, I'll go to a rodeo with Matt. Yeah. You know? Solid guy. But when he's, you know, when the mic's on and the camera's on, he's, he is on. Yeah. So, That's go to the Mirage. What's that? That's what they say about me. Yeah. Hang out with me. I don't Matt know what West. they say that. I told them, I told them, and I didn't even tell JB this, but I told them I, we were emailing earlier in the year, and, and I was like, what you need to do is get JB there. Me and JB. And I'm not even, I mean, like, I'm not going to get anything. for. I don't have a dog in the fight. I was like, you want people to show up, put JB's name in the hat, and it's going to be a party. Yeah. <laughs> get, him, get him a gallon of Jaeger. <laughs> yeah. and, and some chips. And yeah. I, well, I told him, I was like, <laughs> I was like, smokes. I was like don't ask me what he's going to need. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not sure. Just, I'm not going to negotiate for him, but you need just to JB. Just one, one little JB-sized spot at the craps table. Mm. Yeah. Because the the video that I just talked about, my most watched video, he gets on that bull with the flank rope and tennis shoes. That's where I did my plug for the Mirage. They were like, and I was like, hey, meet me at the Mirage. Like, JB's in it. It's the my most watched video. Like, like whatever, what other yeah. evidence do you need? Anyway, um, so life advice. I, I would, I just want to wrap up with, I know that I said a lot of things about interns and doing this. If you want to crushing your dreams, I'm, I'm going to be basic with it. I'm, I'm it's kind of like what it is. It's kind of like that ranching video. This podcast kind of like that ranching video, it's like where the calf died and the cow died yep. and flat tires on the trailer. And you know, things roll in and they say, do you want a ranch? No. Well, like at this point, like I'm doing this podcast where I've just got hit up by all these people. It's like on a full moon or something like they hit me up and they're like, I want to, and I have no problem completely honored for people to reach out. You know, just the way they reach out when it's time yeah. and time again, that it's just like so obvious. Like if you would just wordsmith things a little different and maybe, you know, not even manipulate, but like I would hire you. I didn't know Donnie from Adam, you know, like, and I will hire, hire people, but just like. I had seen you once. Yeah, I remember that. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I'll hire people. Obviously, I take on people, but like you gotta be creative. That's yep. all I'm saying. The lack of creativity is what's frustrating. I know I sound frustrated, and some of you might be thinking I'm never gonna DM this guy. If you're listening now, you probably will. This is a two hour long podcast. There's a possibility you will. Text me nine four zero three five three zero eight nine zero or DM me, and then comment on a post. Hey, check my text in my DM. That's how you get a hold of me. Um, but whatever you want to do, whether it's rodeo, ranching, like find somebody. I thought of this the other day. Like if you want a team rope, fall in love with driving and then find a team roper and offer to drive them for free. Like say, I got a valid driver's license. I will drive and take care of your horses. And then just watch and learn and listen. 
those internships are all about meeting people. Sometimes they're about yep. learning, but they're about meeting people. Yep. Then all of a sudden, you're you like Clay Smith likes you, and you're you're driving him, and you're hanging around, you know, or this person likes you, this Amy guy, and then you meet Clay Smith, and then you talk to him, like, yeah, I'm driving for so and so. He's gonna hear that, and his ears are gonna perk up. He's like, yeah, I, I take care of his horses. I do all that. Preston. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Preston. Mm-hmm. Good dude. He's supposed to come get on bucking horse. Guess who Preston drives for? Trevor Brazil. Like he he does it all. He's like, yeah, I'll do this. Guess who he gets to help turn out steers for when he's practicing? Trevor Brazil. Then world champions come over. Like you you humble yourself for a little bit, and you think Trevor Trevor's a nice guy. He's a genuine dude. He's not gonna use and abuse Preston. Preston asks him a question, he's going to answer it extensively. And then he's going to put Preston on the horse and literally show him. Like, find a way to get there. Preston probably didn't start from scratch, but I guarantee you right. he didn't tell Trevor Brazil, hey, my dream's to be a barrel racer. I mean, <laughs> I guarantee you didn't tell him that either. <laughs> my dream's to be a, a team roper. I uh, only got two weeks a month that I can come by, but... <laughs> Um, I also don't have a horse. I need to borrow a horse. <laughs> right. I want you to teach me how to team rope. If I could get paid also, that would be great. Now, those details are what worked out for Preston, and he got that, but I guarantee that's not what he told Trevor Brazil. Trevor Brazil's going to be like, okay, yeah, go to your county jackpot. Leave me alone. So reach out to someone who is where you want to be and then bring them value, like Donnie did, or like whoever your endorsees are did for you. Mm-hmm. That's how you get a sponsorship too. Don't hit up DB and tell me about some toxic relationship. Yeah, I remember when we met. We were at that coffee shop. Yep. I don't remember where it was. Yep, Jacksboro, Texas. Ja- was it in Jacksboro? Yes. Okay. And uh, I'm sitting there, and Dale walks in, glasses on, hat on, throws his ten-page contract down, and goes, "Here's the deal: sign it or don't sign it. If you want a friend, <laughs> right, get a dog." <laughs> Isn't that how you remember? I think so. <laughs> what I brought you was a list of numbers. For for real. For real. And not numbers of what I wanted. Those for, aren't the numbers. We sat we were in there for an hour and a half, just the two of us in that coffee shop and the in the barista and it was an hour and a half and and you you started by telling me the story of Boone and how much you loved your horse and how you searched for a feed that would save him because you cared for your horse and total feeds is it, you know total equine is the feed that made it and i'm like that's how the conversation started i was all ears right i was all ears yeah and, and i'm like okay i'm listening and well and we made a deal right there i went there, back to my dad i'm like well, this this is there were the three things that we talked about there were three th- number one was boone yep we talked about boone and that was what like put me in the yep it's got to be authentic. Yep. I work with you, rock and roll, Can Am. Yep. And uh, and, and, and American hats. It's got to be authentic. Like I was wearing American hats. Mm-hmm. My old man was wearing one when he died, on a horse. I still got it on the mantle. It's mm-hmm. got the mud stain where he landed. It's an American hat. That's what I'm wearing. Mm-hmm. Um, I feed total feeds. You know. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we talked about Boone. That was important. But then it was like, hey, these are real numbers. Yep. Of how. I can sell you more total feeds. Yep. It wasn't like I need this. You I'm, showed I, me your numbers. I didn't. I didn't even say like I'm gonna wear your patch. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about me wearing a patch in arena because that's bull and it's not gonna. Well, they they're all done. We lost camera too. It's been uh, two hours of nonstop. Sorry, Donnie. Um, <laughs> I didn't give you a bunch of bull crap. <laughs> right. Of of like what I needed. It was, this nope. is what I can do for total feeds. No. Nope. And they were real numbers and they were impressive. And then the third thing was just the story of me and you trusted me mm-hmm. as a person, yep. you know? Yep. So, I knew your background. You told me you were real honest, you know, about your background and where you came from and everything else. And I knew I'm like, man, this, this guy's a, so I called my dad. I left there. I'm like, this guy's a solid fit. We gotta, we gotta hire this guy. Yeah. He's got to be part of the team. No, I appreciate it. And that's what that's what I would look for. It's like, okay, if they're coming to me, 
to making the comparison, they're probably a fan of rodeo time and what we do. Right. You know, number one. Number two, this is what I can do for you. They have to know your product. They know the product, and then it's like, hey, this is what I want to do for you. Yep. This is what Donnie did. And number three, you got to be normal because I'm letting you into my life. Yep. I'm letting you into my home. Like, <laughs> literally don't. my home. People don't know. Like <laughs> It's a cozy operation. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a tight-knit. Like, I got to let you in my life. Like, yeah. if you're not, if you're like a weird dude or something, like, I got to. So, like, yeah. those, you know, you got to check those boxes. Yeah. But the big one is that second one, you know, like, you got to. There's a lot of good people out there, but anyway. And then when you get here, it's, I'm going to make it about you, you know. Well, there's some people, Donnie gets frustrated that I do too much for, that he doesn't think I should, right? I think so. You can you can teach yourself. If you have access to the Internet, you can teach yourself how to use a camera. You can teach yourself how to edit. You can teach yourself all these skills that you need Yeah. before you walk in here. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing about that is like like that's a real skill you can go make a living with. Hundred percent. You can go make a six figure salary hundred percent with what I need. Like I'll let you learn it. If you're willing to learn it, it's gonna put you I, it's gonna make me say, I'm listening. Mm-hmm. You learn that craft and anyways. Um I messed up your helmet here. There it goes. So my life advice, we have been talking a while, Donnie brought it up. Uh, my life advice is uh I had one I earlier. I forgot it. But one I've been using Careful a lot. Careful you say, Donnie, in front of him, he'll, he'll remember. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, oh, Donnie and I were talking about this. I just remembered it. I hadn't thought about it since our conversation. Um, it's uh, when you're kind to someone you don't like, it's not being fake, it's being kind. I thought that was interesting. And there we go. And we just lost that camera too. We'll put up a picture of Dead all three era. of us. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're gonna put up a picture of all three of us. That's what. What you got for life advice, Donnie? Um, I've got two, I guess. Um, this one comes from my college days. Uh, knowledge is great, but it tastes like crap. I mean, the saying is not crap, but it's. It's another word for crap. Right, right. Yeah, we get it. Uh, <laughs> and the other one... <laughs> I was waiting on you to continue. Like I got <laughs> The other one is... Um, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. That one... I've heard that, I heard that one from a guy, and that really stuck with me. I like that one. That That's really good. What you got? Psychiatrist. Yeah... Start start looking around your life. Take responsibility, like Donnie said. Donnie made a perfect point about that. And then start thinking about what you can create in your life that's going to make a change. Be the creator. Yep. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for listening. I'm looking at the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> All three of these cameras are off. I just turn and look at them. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for listening to this very long podcast where we solve all the world's problems. Well, those related to rodeo ranching and uh, relationships and getting a job at Rodeo Time Incorporated. Um, we're finally on to the next one. I hope your long two and a half hour drive has been made quickened by Dale brisby total mr total feeds Corey anderson and donnie ray daytona text me 940-353-0890 and yes it is me texting you and sometimes me let me uh <laughs> i'm gonna do an intro on my phone because we need to tell people hey this is <laughs> we need to tell people what they're in for <laughs> we might need to cut this in chapters yeah this is chapter one <clears throat>